Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stream. My name is Steve, and I have a filament problem. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> hey, Bill Brothers. Hey, PF Dennis. Hey, Kenneth. Hey, Jose. Hey, Dave. Hey, Lars. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steven. Hey, Colin. Hey, Will Jackie. Hey, RS Makes. How's everyone doing? Hey, Pezlas. Hey, Projects. Hey, Maz. Whew, it's been a little bit. It's been a little bit. Hey, Mad Cat. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Tuxedo. Hey, 1060. Tohos. Thanks for being a member for 19 months. Holy moly. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Jose and Nathan. Timor and Skyrim. I, should, I know I'm missing some names. Hey, Telxoid. Oh, hey, Poity. Hey, Arthur. Who else do we have? XYZ and Kenneth and Michael. Yeah, so this is going to be just kind of a hangout. Do a little bit of work on the V0 because I feel like that needs to be polished off. Um, talk about Smurf. Um, yeah. So, hey, Alan. Hey, Lander. Hey, BA. Enrique. PF Dennis. Bryce. Boy. Hey, Laura. And I presume Sean. <laughs> Thanks, Bezlos. Appreciate it. It's behind me. What's behind me? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Um, oh, my little comment. I was cleaning. So I spent Friday, because we got back Thursday night. I spent Friday and yesterday cleaning and organizing. Because the other, the other garage, since I'm not streaming in there anymore, exploded. So I rearranged and cleaned up and counted the spools of filament I have. Any guesses? Any guesses? Steven, thanks for becoming a member. Is there a myth mythical monster behind me? Hey, Mr. Jada D, Mega T. How many? Where? Oh, oh. Let's see. I'm trying to keep track of the guesses. It's either 42 or 69, surely. Whew. Maybe some factor of those, nearly, if you're dyslexic. Very close. So, um, Paul Riggle is really closest. I'm, I have about 240 spools. And when your first thought is, or at least when my first thought is, whoo, April probably doesn't want to know how many there, there are. That's probably a few too many. Well, that's fine. I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out where to put it all. What filament brand do you use the most? Um, there's probably... Well, right now, Polymaker, has, I have the most um, spools of. KVP is up there. Um, and then a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Like, I just bought... See? That's the problem. I just bought some Fusion stuff, because they have a few cool colors I wanted to try. I bought it on the Black Friday sale. I bought some... What's the brand? It's something with some 60A TPU, and then they have a dark orange I wanted to try. So I got that. And what else did I just get? Oh, I got some of the stuff from Smurf. I don't remember what the brand was. It had a cool spool, like geometrically shaped spool. So I have some Sparta. Yep. How much PLA? I have several rolls of PLA, and I use it off and on. How many are still sealed? Quite a bit. Um, 20 feet of rep racks will fix that problem. I don't know that 20 feet would. Would 20 feet work? <laughs> hey, Maurice, no problem. I don't understand why KVP is so expensive. They are fairly local, but wow. Yeah, and KVP's quality has gone downhill, to be honest. So, hey, Max. What do you think? Yeah, we'll get into that. So Smurf, had a fabulous time. Met a lot of new people. Um, I remember a lot of names, uh, faces, but I don't remember a lot of names. A uh, few highlights. Um, there was a gentleman that I, I don't remember your name, but I very much remember your your face. Um, talked to me and and they, they're in the UK and they had a, 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 little, a little stack of um, American money, US dollars on them. And they asked me to donate that to the 
um, Charlie Charity stream. And I'm still able to do that. So I did that um, yesterday. So that, that total number went up a little bit, almost $3,900 to the local animal shelter. So just if you're, if you're listening, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. I very much remember your face, um, but that did get donated. So um, let's see, what other, I brought a bunch of stuff back. So we're gonna talk about this. We can talk about this, but I wanna talk about the event a little bit first. Um, and we're going to, we're gonna do a whole lot of stuff today, just kind of messing around and, and chill, because I had no prep time for, for this, really. A um, couple other things from the event, just things I brought back. Um, let's go here. Um, Kali made some special cover um, Voron manuals for me. I appreciate that. Little Steve Builds and Inspector Charlie for Trident and Switchwire Assembly. So thank you. What else? A bit older than most of the US ones. Yes. The venue was awesome. Um, it was pretty much just the right size, I think. Hey, Kila. Um, I think it was pretty much the right size and it was just gorgeous. Just the, the old, old buildings, old everything. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the GPs, give me a little bit of Welsh dragon goodness along with a bunch of goodies and a shirt. I'm wearing the event shirt now, but some chewy uh, jelly bean and, and fruit candies and a really cool, really cool little bags with the Welsh dragon on it. So thank you. The red dragon made it, yes. Um, unfortunately, some of the little cakes did not. I had one the other day and it was delicious. Uh, I warmed it up too. But last night, my son comes in and says, ants in the kitchen. They took out the rest of, well, no, I take that back. One package survived and the fruitcake survived. So I'll be trying those sometime. So. Um, are those bags embroidered? They are. They are. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And, and what's even better is they have not, not gummy bears, but little fruit snacks. I do have another bag. The ones I didn't get to try is the chocolate chip ones. The, the regular Welsh cakes, I don't remember the, the flavors. I tried those. Um, but, and the fruit cake survived. So, let's see. Wine gums. Oh, okay. They're good. I like them. <laughs> I did not get a full English while I was over there. I got a couple of fish and chips, got a couple of pies. Uh, I did not find a place for a full English. I didn't look very hard either. Um, what else? Sanity get, brought me some, some dark licorice hard candy. I haven't opened those yet. Special edition manual, is that to build your own? <laughs> well, that one's the assembly manual. That one's the, I mean, the switch wire manual. That one's Trident. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, and there are jelly beans in here too. And these are good too. Coffee next to the pie. Oh yeah. Stopped it. So here's my trip. We went there. We flew out Monday and got there on Tuesday, Tuesday about noon, got into, got into uh, Oxford and then I headed over to E3D's headquarters and uh, just kind of said hi, started hanging out there. So, and my wife, exactly what she wanted to do, just kind of bebopped around Oxford for a few days and we'd meet up in the evenings and go to food and, and hang out and stuff. But for the most part, it was basically waiting for Phoenix to show up at E3D and FedEx and customs uh, made sure that that took as long as possible. Hey zombie. Hey Ed. So it finally got there 
I think about 11 a.m. on Thursday. And Doc and I tore into it and just started making sure that it made the trip. Um, hair odds. I don't know what hair odds is. Um, hey, don't knock it. So I finally got there on Thursday. Um, we tore into it, just kind of went through, made sure it made it okay. Um, started doing final assembly and, and that. And then uh, Max gets in uh, that evening, too late to really start working on it. So then we hit it again on Friday and got it ready. I mean, really Max took over and just uh, really took it to the, to the finish line all the way up to the event before it was printing. But um, hey, Squirrel Brain, that was awesome to meet you. Uh, and it wasn't rambling at all. That was that was very fun. So many people. I, I was very, very happy to meet. Um, Harold's is a very posh shop. Ah. Uh, my wife's not too much of a uh, expensive shopper. She'll she'll browse the store here or there. But what's the might have missed it. Was that the same printer you have in the garage? Well, this is a Phoenix, but in order to properly bring a release forward, you need to have multiple of them built. And this one I have been working on for a little while now. It's probably about 80% done. So anyway, we um, took us to Friday, get the Phoenix moved over to the show, went through the whole show. Um, and then on Monday, my wife and I headed over to um, over to London. And we, we got lucky. We had no problems with transportation. The trains worked fine for us. The trains we were taking were still running. Uh, the strikes didn't really impact us, um, which were, were fortunate. Um, I think Tuesday, we took the morning and went and saw the British Museum. Morning, Apollo. Are those giant rainbow bar for a giant stealth burner? No, but we'll get through. We'll get through all the stuff. Um, Tuesday, we took the uh, uh, we went to the British Museum and walked through that for a few hours, and then we took a train up to Cambridge and met up with Tony from Duet and Sam um, from the Raspberry Pi uh, Foundation. So just kind of got a little bit of a a little tour from Tony of Cambridge and a lot of walking around, and then had some drinks and food um, with them. But we did stop at the pie store. So I took the opportunity. I know you can probably get these in many places, but decided to order one from, or buy one directly from the Pi store. So I got these, a shirt, and I got two Pi Fives, um, a shirt and some stickers. So why is there a second frame under it? Second frame? It's not a second frame. That's a table. <laughs> Just happens to be made out of the same extrusions. Hard piece of work to get Phoenix running with all the surrounding noise. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Max and Max and Doc really uh, had a had a fun time getting that running on the show floor. Um Yeah, so this is this that is a pedestal. It's got a top. Um, it's got wheeled feet, so I can roll it around here. Let me catch up on chat. Why did everyone insist the new release wasn't V24 when Phoenix is definitely an offshoot of V24? Because it's not V24, it's Phoenix. And we're just having fun. So, <laughs> it's okay. Um, that would have been less jank than the table it was on. That table it was on was solid. That was the table at the show. The table it was on was directly from E3D's break room. And that was um, a metal frame table. I think it was fine. So... Hey, Aaron. <laughs> Turtle, nice. Started a V0.2 build. So we we went to Cambridge and came back. And then on Wednesday was just kind of our day to go around um, go around London. I did get a chance. I did, did get my run in in the UK. So my wife and I went to, um, what is that park? Hyde Park. We went to Hyde Park and ran around some of it. It looks like it's probably about a five mile loop. We took a three mile loop um, through Hyde Park and I felt great. It was awesome. It was cold, but it was uh, three miles of pretty, a uh, 10 and a half minute mile, uh, which is pretty good effort. So what's the weight of the Phoenix? Uh, 200 plus pounds. So 
It was insane. I managed to get distracted enough to wire one of the bed mains to ground. Many pixels escaped. Yes, pop the, popped, what, is it a breaker? The, whatever, pop something in the circuit. Uh, Zach, me and Nero's inspired you to build a 2.4. Awesome. Um, John, nice talking to you at Smurf. Steve, looking forward to the Phoenix build. Awesome. Thank you. Let's see. Well, the Phoenix looks like a lot of fun. Amazing job. I'm sure it will be fun. Yeah. So it's been a good build. I have been recording all of the process of building this. Um, it'll get released as very, it'll be a very long series of videos. Um, very little editing if you actually want to see it. So, <laughs> so it wasn't mall cop that caused a breaker bomb. Nope. Nope. Just a miswired bed. Marcel. Yes, very much so. Thank you. Um, the Phoenix will require CNC machine parts. So this is the machine that's not going to follow the full Voron design ethos. Um, it does require some custom parts. The other machines, Trident, Switchwire, V2, those are going to continue there. So. Just realized the printer behind you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any info on when Kraken will be available for purchase? I don't. I don't. That's completely up to um, Big Tree Tech. I do have um, Kraken uh, pre, pre-release. Um, well, I actually have three of them in the shop right now. One of them's on the printer. One of them is a even earlier pre-release than this one. And this one I brought back um, for Doc. So I need to ship this off to Doc. That huge V2 behind you I really want. And yes, we need we need a we need a 1515 Phoenix. <laughs> this is a machine that won't be built nowhere near as much as others. Yeah. It this is going this is a very a very expensive bomb compared to the other printers. Phoenix uses the same motion system as Tridex, yes. So all the Eddies and companies work on Tridex was taken advantage of here. Hey, Dark Zara. Let's see. So went for a run in Hyde Park and then just kind of walked around. We walked across Tower Bridge, um, checked out, took some pictures of Tower London and walked 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 over what was it tuesday and wednesday tuesday we got thirty thousand steps and wednesday we got thirty two thousand steps <laughs> will the update on the phoenix stealth burner be merged to the normal stealth burner eventually so all of this stuff remember all the release we talk about releases we talk about early 2024 or whatever but remember that the whole team are volunteers i think Max might look sideways at me. Early 2024 is not realistic. It's going to happen, but it'll happen as people can get the time and um, to go through all of the stuff that needs to happen for a release. So, what custom fabricated parts are on the Phoenix? Um, most of the gantry and Z axis plates and stuff are all custom machined. The X carriages are all custom machined. So. But the extrusions are all off-the-shelf extrusions. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much the custom stuff. Panels might be fun to cut. A uh, neat note is the big back panel and the side panels I cut on my Shapeoko with Max's help, with RCF's help. So... How long did it take the team to pick the name for the Phoenix? Uh, Max just came up with it. So it'll happen on Friday and I'll tell which Friday. It was your birthday in the UK. Did you get to do something specific? No, but it was just, it was awesome being just in the UK. My wife's birthday was in the UK. She, her birthday was Wednesday. The Wednesday we got there, mine was the following Wednesday. Um, she's exactly 51 weeks younger than me. Um, although she looks 10 years younger than me. Right, Max? Um, <laughs> but it was fun. I had, I had dinner on my birthday with uh, Pooch and Doc at a really nice seafood restaurant in um, near the the science museum where we saw the original Darwin. Got some pictures of the original Darwin there. Um, yeah, Phoenix. Big, so Steve has to play sleep when Lisa finds out how much filament he has. April. April is my wife's name. <laughs> 
Um, yes, so when this is released, the full everything is going to be released. So you can machine them yourself if you want. If you have a home CNC, you can you can mill them yourself. How much does a war on Trident cost using the bomb to get everything? That's a great question, George. Probably a little bit more than a kit. So kits are what, $1,200, $1,300? You're probably looking a bit a little bit more than that. What's new with Stealth Burner? Um, some tweaks to the cable cover and an integrated um, ERCF style um, uh, filament feed sensor. It's not really a run out sensor because with Clipper, um, you're not necessarily, I don't, well, I think Max corrected me on this, but I, I thought you couldn't, it, you need a little bit of distance for it to actually be effective. Hey, Ajax. Maybe switch cams when poking Phoenix. I do have a closer cam. Here we go. We'll do that one while we're talking. Um, what else? Can you put it on big screen? Is that is that what you're looking for? <laughs> um, yeah, Phoenix is yes money. Phoenix is yes money, that's for sure. So the Voren CNC needs to be released soon to machine Phoenix parts. No comment. Um, we covered the stealth burner and radar absorbent material for more stealth. Everybody who buys ACM wholesale and four by eight sheets, let me know if you need panels. So the the tough thing, this is using quarter inch ACM panels for the deck. Um, usually what's easier to get is eighth inch. So can you get quarter inch? Um, Clipper has a new priority queue now that allows you to stop faster. Okay, that's what you were explaining to me. Thank you. Hey, Johnny boy. What is custom CNC on the machine? All the gantry parts and the Z axis parts. Did you already mention typical machine parts cost? No idea what the cost is going to be. We had a, some, a, a set, a few sets of parts machined by Mandela Roseworks for the dev printers. Um, but that's not going to be indicative of, of typical cost. Total cost of my fat rig is pushing 3000 for reference. Yeah, and you're probably looking at four to five bomb cost for this. Total guess without actually adding things up. Because you buy things and then you th those don't work. You buy something else. Um, I think just the frame and the pedestal from Masumi was $1,500. So it does have caster holes built in. Yep. Hey, Jeff. You hear more about the stealth burner and tap. So it is a different um, tap. This is a machine carriage. It is um, different from what's out there. It uses what are called VR2 rails. And these are generic VR2 rails. They're not the expensive THK ones. Soon we'll be able to hire candle higher chamber temps just to warm up all that space. Yeah. And it has 2.4 kilowatts worth of beds. <laughs> this build is good luck and Godspeed type. Yeah. When you go bigger, it will cost more. Yep. Yep. And the, and the, here, where is it? Let's do this. This will be a good, this will be a good picture. Whoa. There we go. build sheet that's that's a v0 build sheet <laughs> it is the fabrico sheet yeah yep get set up there for now ah <sighs> You want to use ball screws over belts just because there's a reason. That's a very heavy gantry. So I think ball screws is the right choice there. Yeah, thanks Fabrico for that sheet. And I mean, they're in contributing to these builds is LDO and Fabrico and Mandela Roseworks and uh, Big Tree Tech and. I thought my 500 was a beast. So I'm, I got to figure out things that I'm going to print on this. Um, especially taking advantage of IDEX, print a full size V20, V2.4 with it. Yeah. This is going to monopolize the stream, isn't it? Just talking about Phoenix. Hey, Lonmo. 
I like to see more of this morphed over to the V2.4. Took a village to get here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, a, and a big crate and a lot of prayers that it made it over to the UK. Not this one, but the one that got auctioned off. We almost need a Costco type membership store for 3D printer stuff to bring the cost down. Well, if we put out, as the Voron team, we put out a design. It's really up to the vendors and everything on whether they think it's worth it to do any portion or full kits or whatever. Um, I did put it into the shot. <laughs> um, but if that happens, then just quantities is going to bring some pricing down, especially in fasteners. I bought fasteners for a couple of big machines. Um, and I think I was a, nearly a grand in fasteners. Um, this has some pretty expensive shoulder bolts um, in it. Like five, six dollars a piece. Oh, we have 350 people now. Nice. Running a 2.4 is lots of bragging rights. I think when this is finished in printing, I will be the only person in the world with the full collection of Voron Design designs. <laughs> we do need more likes. Like with every stream, we are giving away a roll of Polymaker filament today. So link is in the description and the pinned post. Um, and our goal always is to try to hit 300 likes by the three hour mark. So let's keep that streak going. Unrelated to this, but when are you planning to rebuild Trident? That's a great question. My, my schedule gets full. And that's why I talked about last, last stream I did, I talked about um, trying to get an additional stream in. It might not be consistent and it'll probably be in the evenings on the weekdays, but I need to start um, getting some of the backlog caught up. Let's see, who did you ship with? Um, it was FedEx, which is terrible. I would have rather done UPS than FedEx. I, I don't like FedEx at all. I've done a legacy. Yeah. I have legacy zero one. Did you order the Polymaker Christmas pack? I did. I did. It's sitting on the shelf in there. Can't imagine how many streams Phoenix build would take. A lot. I'm up to um, many, many hours <laughs> of recorded footage. Can you get a helper at times? I've been able to do it on my own. It's not too bad. Um, I made sure to do all the things that would requ require flipping the printer, um, before it got heavy. So, and at this point it doesn't need flipping. Um, these, these deck panels are in three pieces. So it comes off and all the wiring inside there is done now. So I'm going to get a Positron. Have you received one? I did. So, um, I, I do have a Positron kit. It, Nero and I will be doing a collaboration stream, similar to what me and Modbot did. Hey, Gentech. Um, that'll probably be after the first of the year. Um, these are beta kits, and they've gone out to all the beta testers and me and Nero, basically. And we're there, we are going to start our build when the manual is in a little better shape, and they've had the first round of finding little things. Um, so... need an engine lift to flip it this is this is true although it wasn't too bad for four of us to carry it up the steps because we had to carry it up steps to get it on the show floor um the it was too big for their elevator <laughs> this is a phoenix the phoenix elizabeth are there any phoenix innovations that would make sense to bring back to tridex um that's a good question i'd have to think about that i don't know I need to hook you up with 45 drives to get some mega NAS action for you. Let's release this tap for 2.4. This tap, that's a good question too. Um, it would not be mainline. Uh, anything that pretty much all the custom stuff on here would end up being like optional stuff. Tap is an optional thing to begin with, so. Uh, let me catch up. I'm falling behind. Does Phoenix Bomb include an engine lift? It should. Although if you're if you're smart, I haven't had to lift it um, beyond the very beginning, just putting the, the bottom panels on it. 
Once the bottom panels were on, it's basically stayed upright the whole time. What are your thoughts on a Millennium CNC mill? It looks really cool. Um, I am scheduled to be on the uh, list of folks to get one of those. And we, if I do, then um, we'll build it on stream. Was the Trident just something the team wanted to try and has moved on, or are there good arguments for the Trident? I think the Trident fits a good spot um, in in a, a, the different, the more traditional um, Core XY um, configuration. So Trident is, I mean, I, I'm not going to let it die. I work as a tech at FedEx, and honestly, shippers don't package most things well, considering packages are sorted by automated machines. Well, this this did ship freight, so it's a little different. Um, I'm still trying to catch up. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to co the collab with Nero. Um, we'll do it very similar in terms of the the structure of the of the thing as we as I did with Daniel. What are the differences between the Trident and the 2.4 R2? Basically, Trident the gantry is fixed. 2.4 the gantry moves. So the bed is fixed on a 2.4. The gantry goes up. On a trident, the gantry is fixed. The bed moves down. Hey, Thomas. This could be a crit for mini mod bot. I'm going to just have to skip to the end on chat. I'm just going to keep falling behind. Can't you know, wait to see the OCD of his. Eh, good enough. <laughs> we'll see how they turn out at the end. Um, okay. What else? Any other questions on Phoenix? While we're thinking of questions on Phoenix, other things that I picked up at the show. Um, these are, people were asking about these. These are NeoPixels for the front of Micron. So someone had these. I don't remember who who gave these. Oh, and I missed a couple of things. Um, Bill Brothers, thanks for the gifted memberships. And Thomas, thanks for the gifted memberships. <laughs> Fixter Jake, thanks for becoming a member. Is Phoenix more accurate or the same in terms of accuracy compared to the smaller printers? It should be the same. Um, I will be able to speak to that better once I get it built in printing. But it should be the same. How long does it take to get the chamber to 50C in the, in the Phoenix? I don't know. Um, Max is feeding Fat Charlie, um, otherwise known as Cheddar. Cheddar, I have, I have pet Cheddar. Um, I've seen Cheddar in person. It's like three times the mass of Charlie before Charlie got sick. Um, hey, Doc Gal Galaxy, welcome. What size nozzle you'd be running on that? Probably a 0.6 usually. Um, it is a 600 millimeters squared by probably 550-ish in Z. Uh, considering I'm not likely going to be doing super massive, it's more about plates of parts. Um, I think a 0.6 will still be fine. Although it is it is high flow Revos. So I and I have the full range of um, of nozzles. How long has the build been so far? I don't know how many hours. I, I I've recorded it all. So there's a little bit of off camera stuff, um, but the the recorded footage is probably a pretty good um, I guess uh, little diffusers for these. And then this um, noob, P noob, um, gave this to me. It is a way super overkill continuity tester. And I couldn't quote exactly all the things and reasons that it's overkill, but it'll, it'll measure some um, continuity to some pretty low uh, resistance value. I'll be putting that together. Hey, Viney. You know, some will do speed benchy on it. This time you can do two at once. Yep. Does that mean you get half the, the time is half? <laughs> See evil. Take care. PF, thanks for the gifted memberships. One of the larger ones, Vier 0 0.2 is fiddly in places. What else? Um, We'll get into some other things here in a minute. Um, Jay from Team Gloomy. Um, we, with the rep rep for more stuff I've been working on and whatever had mentioned um, a providing me a 
RepRap firmware CAN tool headboard. So this is a little package of parts that's gonna go towards that. And everyone, hey Thunderkeys, wondering about the forum build from you and Nero's been fun. Awesome, thank you. Do you have a lot of machined aluminum parts or any of your Vorons or are they printed parts? I have one Voron with machine parts. It's my original V2. I'll show that off a little later, another stream. Um, but uh, the rest of mine are all printed parts. Um, do you have a do, 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 do. The, although one of the upcoming probably weekday streams is I'm gonna do um, Tiny T's nine millimeter Trident belt setup on, on one of my Tridents. Anyway, this Mellow stuff has a little can, rep rep firmware compatible can tool headboard and the, what is this board? It is the Super 5. And I'm thinking we might put this in my solid fork, swap the, the MKS board out for this on the solid fork when I refresh it. So that'll be fun to play with. Get a little more rep rep firmware experience and some can. Yeah, the 320 V2, yep. Any difference in quality prints? Are you talking about on Phoenix? I don't know. I haven't, once I'm printing with it and I'm able to tune a profile, then yeah. Are you going to do a video putting the NeoPixels on your Micron? I was inspired to build mine by your stream and I couldn't possibly be happier, it is amazing. I don't know. Uh, just the, the whole thing of there are so many little things, little projects, it's hard to fit them all on a, on a video. What is the overall dimensions of the Phoenix? About this by about this. And it's, it's taller than me. It's actually half an inch too high for where I wanted to put it. <laughs> Hey, Shammy. Oh yeah, solid for a great place for that Super 5. Yeah, I, 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 I really want to revisit the um, solid fork and I think that's the perfect, perfect board for it. Hey, Ricky. Um, using my polymaker I want on your stream, awesome. Doing the CNC aluminum and the printed parts. Only five printers. I stay super busy with add-ons and upgrades. I, I stay, I, I have 20 something. <laughs> Glad to catch some of this. I just got a form up V-Zero kit. Welcome. What else do we have? I purchased, oops, wrong, wrong button. I purchased some of the event filament. So this was, this was, depending on the, the particular filament, it was between 20 and 25 pounds um as a donation to the San J. Mortimer Foundation and and get a, a roll of filament but it, I was attracted to the laser cutting on the on the roll itself and this is what did they call this color what did they call it oh it is San J. steel and I probably won't open it I'll probably just keep that but, yep are you planning on printing with Phoenix? I don't know yet. I don't know. Any update on your stream schedule? I think you mentioned maybe adding, a, yes, I will be, I'm not sure when. And picked up one of these cool electroplated benches. That seems like a pretty good price for like limited edition donation spool. Yeah, I thought so. Charlie would just curl up in Phoenix. Especially if I turn the bed on like 20C. <laughs> and oh, and then the big thing I got from the event is I ended up being the winner of the Taco Raven. So, will the Phoenix include any printed parts? There are printed parts. There are um, spacers, but there's um, metal spacers in those. There are some appearance pieces there's some printed parts on the filtration system uh, the the skirts or the the borders around the front doors and the electronics thing has some printed parts 
Mr. Rowdog, thank you. Just wanted to say thank you for all your live streams. I'm able to build all three of my Vorons because of them. That's awesome. Your tips and suggestions have been most helpful. Thank you for all the content and contributions to the community. Thank you. Appreciate that. Do you know the printable panels for V0? You can make some cool IDEX panels for Trident 2.4. I did get Nero's Taco Raven. I, um, I decided early on that I was going to go for it. I put in the first bid on it. Um, I put in a 200 pound bid on it and that stayed there for a little bit. It, it, and then it got, I got outbid. So I, I waited and then I bumped the bid a few times. Um, and then I put in my final bid and ended up getting this for, um, 280 pounds. Basically it's a donation of the San J. Mortimer foundation. Right. And I, and I ended up with a neat little, um, thing out of it. Thanks, zombie, for being a member. Only because I lost track of time. <laughs> what would your max bid have been, Shammy? <laughs> I got it. I got. It. I put in a three hundred pound max bid, um, and then I and then I'm glad I got it because I completely wasn't aware of when the actual um, end of auction was going to be. Would have loved a bit on that, but I didn't realize it was going to be auctioned off on the Saturday. I think my, maybe a few things got in that category. Need to have an Ivan Miranda edition Phoenix. I use Rainbow Bar for the Stealth Burner or the Fan Skirt. I haven't. I have both, but I haven't actually installed them. Linus, thanks for being a member. Thomas, thanks for being a member. I want a Phoenix backpack, my 2.4. I want that Smurf filament. You didn't have a Taco Raven. I did not. This is pre, this is before my time with Voron. So this is the original box with some hand-drawn, I think. No, that's not hand-drawn. That is a printout of something that someone drew. And then there's an, the original artwork Doc has, and he's going to send it to me to go along with this. Uh -huh. I was going to go 200. Thanks for outbidding me. <laughs> Get rid of your stock of hex trays. So that's the thing. I didn't. And that's probably my fault for not advertising it enough or mentioning it to people. But I kind of put it out there and I only gave away two. Um, Sanity got one. And I don't remember the name of the gentleman that got one. But that one, they, they picked the high five blue one. So we went and found Joel and had him sign it as well. 300 was your max. You have the new double rail tap on hand to show. I, I, I don't, it's installed on the, on the printer there. What are you gonna make with the Phoenix? Good question. Additive Adam, thanks for being a member. Who won the Phoenix option? I don't remember their name. Really curious to see which vendors make Phoenix kits and the costs, what's your estimated for kit? Kit costs, I don't know. But bomb cost, I'm guessing four to 5,000 is what's gone into it so far. Hey, Dr. Dave. Hey, Dr. Intruno. It was nice to meet you. Better a taco raven than a raven taco. So my plan for this is, I'm, obviously I'm not gonna use it. I'm not gonna install it in a printer. But what I think I want to do is use the, the CNC and any other making um, tools. And I wanna make little shadow boxes that are clear, um, acrylic on both sides and use them for, for show display pieces. I have this, I have a nacho hat and, um, I have the very early Leviathan, um, boards. So I think those would be cool, um, display pieces. I can put them on the shelf here and I can take them with me to shows, but this is the, um, the thing, these board, these connectors are on the bottom because the pinout is backwards. So, and then the cool um, silk screen Taco Raven logo. Bill Brothers, thanks for being a member for 19 months. I assume the Sunday they were already gone, so I didn't ask you about them. I should have done it. Yeah, I wish I wish I would have brought it up more. That's that's really my fault. I brought five of them back. Um, I'll end up giving those away at Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Firmware or Festival, um, along with any more that I produce between here and then. Do, do, do. 
heat sinks are on the wrong side of the drivers. They are, they are. Um, and, and really, if you look at it, there's not a whole lot of copper right there. I don't know what's in between as far as driver, um, heat sinking thermal vias, but there's, there's not a lot compared to what you see on other boards here. So in any case, it won't actually get installed. It's going to become a display piece. Setting up the Voron Museum. <laughs> Well, I think I'm, I've gone to the most um, events. Maybe Nero might have gone to more, but. Um, Jay, thanks for the gift and memberships. Do you have a Trident side pack frame installed on any of your Tridents? I do not. I, I, I have no, it's cool. But there's, o there's only so much of the mod stuff I can get to. Sanity did offer to bring one over so I could arrange my parts. You should have. I want. To, I do want to shout out Maz. Um, was super helpful. Um, Maz ended up being my go-to because when I'd hear someone needed something, Maz had it. Um, every every the most prepared person there. Um, what do we got? Is there documentation for installing Rocky Rocky Mountain Rep Rep firmware? <laughs> it's it's a branch. You got you got to go find it at that other GitHub. <laughs> I wonder what PCB is four or six layers. I don't know details on it. Max might can convince the Computer Museum in Mountain View to make some space for a Voron Museum. Are there any local list shows for California? Um, this last October, I attended Orange County Maker Fair, and then there was um, Mare Island Maker Fair. Now, I exhibited at Orange County Maker Fair. I just went and checked out Mare Island for a few hours one of the days. Ari, thanks for gifted memberships. I did kind of bring about, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what else? I think the last thing, as far as things I got, um, well, there's a couple of things. Um, there, I ended up with some of the um, Bamboo Labs hot ends. Now, the only reason I ended up with these, because I knew that you could install these in a Voron, so I thought it would be cool. Um, when is Rocky Mountain? April 20, April 20 something, that weekend. So I printed, when I got back, I found a mount on printables and I printed it. The flow rate on the 0.4 nozzle, um, high flow obsidian, obs obsidian, um, supposed to be in the mid twenties. So this is going to go on, I'm going to do all of this. I'm going to put this and Revo Roto with its mount on my 2.4 with rep rep firmware along with a can tool headboard from duet which i don't have in here i didn't bring it in so that'll be a neat little build hey galvani sunday is good um there are any events in Florida? I'm not sure. I was lucky enough to grab one of the point four ones right when it went live. Nice. We've been thinking about trying one of those E3D bamboo tool heads. Looking forward to see how they perform. Yeah, I mean, the mount seems pretty solid. There's a few print issues that I would probably correct. Um, and it's, it's a remix of another one. Some of this geometry isn't necessary, but otherwise it seems pretty decent. This, um, Mounts in there like that. There's a couple of screws that go through there, a couple of self tappers that can go through here, and yeah. Seems reasonable. You can use the E3D Roto with any hot end. You can because the Roto, and we'll get into that here in a second, has a Bowden option. So in the because of packaging in a stealth burner setup, um, it, it's, it installs basically where like a 
Galileo 2 or a Orbiter or Clockwork 2 goes. D02 in Fat Rig is like a cheese. <laughs> yes. Putting a standard bamboo hot high on my Micron build. Yep. I guess this goes really well in a, there's a, a very easy to install um, v, uh, mini stealth burner mount for this. I have a, I have two of these. I have a 0.4 and a 0.6. My plan is to just build up another tool head with, um, with the 0.6 nozzle. So I can just swap it on the V2. I did have to order from bamboo, the heater and thermistor, and those should be here tomorrow. I don't have any thoughts on the RCF 2.0. I, I saw the teaser. Um, I haven't looked into anything else on it. What do you think to the sock not covering the bottom on the Revo nozzle? I don't know. In the process of this Trident build, I was wondering what your most modified from stock printer is. Most modified from stock. Well, I have a bear Prusa. Does that count? <laughs> Prusa is my second printer. First was a Voltzbot. Nathan, thanks for being a member. Is the new tap from Phoenix being released? Eventually, yes. Has anyone has heard of the basically a monoprice mini select? Okay, so that's the Bamboo Labs, and that's a. Uh, just a obsidian 0.6 there is so the way that revo roto let's pull this open ender 5 mercury 1.1 with hydra if you consider it an ender 5 modified that would definitely be my most modified printer but i just consider it a mercury 1.1 um so this is the revo roto package i received this 15 minutes before I left, um, the Monday before, um, Smurf. So, hey Blam, will the Phoenix have jacking points to change the wheels? So, there's some wires. There is the filament runout sensor that bolts to the top. I will be installing this because there's a port right on the um, Duet tool headboard for it. And this is the, there is a second thermistor for um, hot end heat sink monitoring. But since it's not actually uh, heat being used as a heat sink in my setup, I probably won't be installing that. Hey, Jack Black. And then the little fan that Nero had all kinds of fun with um, on his stream. And then miscellaneous stuff there. But then the, the star. It's the Revo Roto. So one of the things I did while I was hanging out at E3D, waiting for Phoenix to show up, is checking this out and helping validate their design for a adapter um, to mount this in a stealth burner. So... This is that adapter. This should be on printables, but I did notice um, it was there yesterday. I noticed it wasn't the final version. Um, the There's a little extra feature here to make room for different tool head boards um, that was on an earlier version. Uh, Marhanen should include a thermistor mount on the heatsink. Yeah. Um, so this is the... so. I don't remember who at E3D designed the original. I think it was probably Sam. Um, I went through and remixed it while I was there um, into this, but this goes in here. And this mounts with one M4 screw into that mounting point and two on this side. And then these other two holes are for a tool headboard. Now this is only compatible with single piece tool headboards because the spacing here doesn't allow for the two piece. But then this goes on here and this would sit something like that. Have you built a new tap for Phoenix? How does it compare to the current tap? I have built it, I haven't used it. It's 
it's right there and there. <laughs> This is a huge printer. This is staying in this garage. Um, it will probably get some sort of dust cover over it as well. Is the sensor on the new version of the stealth printer just a switch or is it a, it's Hall Effect? It's, some, it's the same sensor as used on the ERCF. Um, and I don't know if they're still using it, but at least the earlier ones. How are we on over 400 people? Holy moly. Have you built the new tab? Doo -doo -doo. You hit, awesome. My biggest question is the Phoenix coming out as a 350 version, 600 by 600. Jason, how are you? Thank you very much. I think it's staying in whatever room it is assembled in. Yes. Now this is, this is, um, an LDO frame. So be that what it is. That's, I wanted mine to be all silver. So. Um, and then I used the printed parts are Ambrosia, um, Gal or Galactic Black ASA and Polymaker, um, Galaxy Red ASA. Shammy, thanks for the gift and memberships. We will be coming to the UK next year, possibly. Um, uh, very possible. It will not be a full vacation. Um, trip. It would be a shorter one, but I'm going to try because that was a lot of fun. Okay, so large, you could probably just buy a stove range hood for the exhaust. <laughs> oh, let me catch up. How tall is the Phoenix? I'm 5'10". So like 6'2". <laughs> just a remix of three. Yes, that's what the Mod community is four, right? Will the weight of the Phoenix be enough to twist the frame on uneven floors when rolling it around? I don't think so. The frame is pretty sturdy and there's big aluminum plates that are um, helping hold it together along with some internal brackets. Benefit to a VR2 over MGN. It can be wider, so more stable. Um, a VR2, a VR2, the VR2 setup, basically it's two metal blocks um, with a groove in between them and then a little carrier with 45 degree offset um, cylindrical bearings. Um, and they, those roll in that groove and allow this, side, this up and down motion, but no side to side motion or twisting motion. They're very um, adjustable. And that's a plus and a minus. You, you definitely have to push them together to get a solid connection. If they're not, if they're not tightened well, then there is some play in them. Why Hall Effect seems the ball bearing with DF2 switch options more reliable for filament switch. We'll find out. What are you planning to print? Oh, it, yeah. So this is... I mean, Phoenix itself isn't that tall, but on the, on the stand, it's, it's too tall for where I wanted to put it. What are you planning to print on that? That's a good question. I'm open to suggestions. Do you have a spare VR2 bearing? I don't. The, I only have the ones that are installed there. So... Okay, so that is Revo Roto. Like I said, this is gonna go on <clears throat> my RepRep firmware V2. Um, and the big reason for that is because I, then I can use the, the Duet CAN tool headboard that's designed for uh, Revo Roto. Its mounting holes are right here in the same spot as the Revo Roto. Rat Rig is pushing a meter. Next week, I will receive Polymaker Spool from a massive giveaway. Awesome. So for everybody on the giveaway, everything has been sent to vendors. Um, it is with Black Friday and busy times. Um, I would give them a little bit of time um, to sort things out. Um, 
but I have reached out to a couple to see what, uh, what status is, uh, based on folks contacting me and asking. Of course, the first has to be a full plate of Voron cubes. I really, I do want to print a full plate of the Nasta fabric because I think that would be fun to play with. A full two by or two by two, 600 by 600 sheet. I received a Neptune four. Awesome. That's, that's good to hear, Mike. Already got my Mellow CNC tap from that giveaway. Perfect. So th this is good to hear. I'm glad to hear that. I keep getting calls from Moraga, California. I don't know why. It's spam. Um, wine cube. <laughs> uh, what else do I have here? I think that's the things from the show. Let me put these things back. And we can work on the V0. What is the point of the adapter for Revo Roto on the stealth burner? It's just the ability, it gives you the ability to install it, is, is the real point. This this setup, the the Revo Roto, in the the logical orientation installing it in a Voron, it ends up being too wide. You lose some X um, travel and part cooling gets a little weird because normally you would have a fan over here and then you've got to actuate the the filament release here part cooling doesn't really fit well and it has to sit so low on the carriage um just to get it working you use it in the bowden configuration when try phoenix version will the nema 23 motor power enough to lift large bed <laughs> the 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 phoenix sized like tri tridex uh, probably I would I would say that's probably fine but I don't know that that's in development print a NASA fabric blanket yeah hey scope UK I have finished defrosting it was not as cold as I prepared for the UK was not nearly as cold as I feared um, I brought long underwear I brought extra sweaters I way overpacked I, I will pack differently next time. The Revo Roto will be worth its price. Um, that's a good question. I don't know how it compares to other solutions as far as price. Try Phoenix would be a monster. You have to use, if you do, what, I missed something. I got way behind. Do the NASA fabric, you have to use concentric first layer. It makes it look a lot cooler. Yeah. Poity, you sent me something on Discord. I'll, I'll check that in a minute. I see a bunch of pings. Suggestion for printer use, build a six degree of freedom sim racing motion rig. Think Star and print some nice accessories. Okay. A hydraulic pump to lift the bed. <laughs> Can you make an IDEX printer print twice as fast as similar Core XY with a single tool head? As far as motion speed, it's more weight. You're, you've got a penalty somewhere, right? But as far as parts production, you could do mirror mode or whatever and get effectively twice the output from it, right? Or duplication mode. Um, electronic speed controller from a couple of tracks. XMAX could really make the XY move fast and precise. I went to Oxford. Yeah. This is ball screws, by the way. I see a comment there about ball screws. This is ball screws on here. I think they're 12 millimeter ball screws. And we didn't get as much rain as I was, I, I thought we might. It rained a bit, but not as much. You have to come here to Sweden. See, Ari. It was a tough sell for me with the smart order bowler. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a premium product, right? With a premium price. So it's not going to be for everybody. Hey, Martin. Hello, Rowan. Thanks for the gift of the sub. And I also started building my 2.4. Awesome. 
how much was each ball screw? That's probably the most expensive parts now. I don't know what they're necessarily cost. Uh, these were provided for the build. But those kind of, those motion things, rails, long rails and ball screws and stuff have come down in price quite a bit. Um, well, or quality at the cheaper prices has increased. Let's see. Hey, 3 Matic Vince. What else? So I think that's about it. I have a little wine, wine chew. And then we can probably just get into working on the V0. I'm, I'm surprised we haven't hit 300 likes yet. We have four, 450 people here. Is that a Pi 5? Yep. Pi 5 from the Pi store in Cambridge itself. How about two of them? Hey, Maple Leaf Makers, welcome. Yeah, one of the challenges with Phoenix here is filament path. You've got a moving gantry and a long path means it's it's very, it takes a bit to make sure it doesn't drop in and interfere with your print. If you saw it at the show, it comes along this cable chain and then down this little guide and then up to the top. That's one of those things that it'll be, we need to do some, some more testing, but I'd be surprised if that's the final configuration. If I can get it to run next weekend, awesome. Sounds like an expensive trip. <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, that, that was a fun trip. It was definitely enabled by all of you. Um, it, I was going no matter what but the decision was made a whole lot easier um, based on the support that you, everybody's given me. I'd like to see a close-up of that Y chain. I don't know if I can push the whole thing back and it goes there. It's, it's a, this is actually a Befenebe chain from Amazon. It is the tight radius. I think it's the 19 or 18 millimeter radius chain it needs to be in order to hit the back of the uh the gantry but it just goes there like that and just kind of it sags a little bit but it it settles on top of those extrusions just fine we don't have a pie store here in cambridge oh in cambridge massachusetts but you can buy a pie at the micro center can you buy a pie five yet What are your plans for the Pi 5? I was considering setting one up to run OBS to stream my printer cameras to Twitch. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I'm probably going to set one of them up as just kind of a workstation type thing. Um, and I'm probably going to work on, put one of them in a printer and see what it, it whatever. Is that just Ethernet Cat 5 cabling for the tool head? No, this is, I guess, Chainflex. This is, I guess, Chainflex um, 22 gauge wires, four conductor 22 gauge. So it's somewhat proper cabling for the application. And this does not hit, as far as the motion, um, It does, the worst um, bend radius it does is at the very back, max Y. Um, and that's it's not really putting any strain on the on the cable there. So okay. Yesterday, because I forgot, I actually cut the back panels for the V0. So I did these on my Shafoco and it worked really well. It didn't take very long. I'm in love with chain flex cabling. Stuff is awesome. Yeah. Um, hate sagging umbilicals. 
So I, I did a two piece back, um, back panel here. Away. Or the V0. The idea here is since the extruder's right here, I want to have a constant access to it. So this goes up here and gives me room there. Um, let's move this over and zoom in here. There we are. And then this is just for appearance and this will go down here. So. Yep. With that, I think we can put those on. So. I did reverse those screws so this can come right off, which is going to make it a whole lot easier to work on. Oh, I got all the all the bits and pieces I'm going to need inside here. And feel free to continue asking any questions on the trip or or Phoenix. I just wanted to keep my keep myself busy here and make progress. So this is going to go down here and we've got these pre-installed screws. Now I only need two of on this side because the spool holder mounts to the side. So I might work on pulling this, pulling one of these out of here. Nice touch on the hinges. Yeah, someone suggested that last last stream and I I agreed. Okay, so that comes out there and then I think I can just, I'm hoping I can just flex this enough to. Let's see if I can get either of these out. See if I can get enough flex in this just to pull this out of this here. Time to go reset the print for printing Lego storage trays. Nice. Oh, there we go. There we go. Get one of those out of there because I don't need I don't need three. Tighten the rest of it up. How soon will we see your Phoenix up and running? Well, after stream, I'm planning on working on it some more and doing more filming. So really, I feel like it's about 80% done. Oh, so here, here's something we can, we can check out. So headphone check. I'm going to turn this thing. It might be loud. I'm going to turn it. It might be loud. So. There we go. So that's where I'm at on wiring. Hey, Maker Viking. The motor mounts change between V0.1 and V0.2. I hang on the screw positions. Motor mounts. No, I don't think so. That was Smurf compared to the other RepRap firmware in North America. It was very, very, the big difference for me is the different people that I got to see. Um, so, as far as feel and stuff is very similar, but it was really cool to see folks that I had a very little chance of seeing in the US. So yeah, there are four SSRs. The beds are powered individually. There's a 24 volt and a 48 volt UHP series power supplies, and then the Kraken and a Pi. So I have things all the ac i've powered up the ac and tested the voltage output on the power supplies that works the next thing is terminating all the stepper um, connections putting thermistors to their spots end stops and the can wiring and then i'll be able to see if it moves v0.2 motor mounts have less screws oh then v0.1 yeah but effectively, they're basically the same. They're cross-compatible. 
There's a crack in the pie? What? <laughs> so a little bit of DC power routing to do. I was able to simplify the AC wiring quite a bit because this is a big metal plate. Um, so everything is already connected, interconnected with ground. So I didn't need extra Wagos for ground. I just take this inlet to this power supply, that inlet to that power supply, and they're electrically connected. And then I have a fatter ground going to the beds and I'll have one more bed ground going to the frame. Protective earth. Yes. <laughs> Protective earth, AC ground, however you want to refer to it. Hey, Steven. Do you ever run relays to control power for your PSU control boards? I have not. I haven't gotten into that. What's the build volume of this be? 600 by 600 by probably about 550. Not quite 600 in Z, just because of um, wiring interferences. Those conduits make it look like Vader's helmet. Yes, I love this. This is such a good idea by Max. And it just, it looks good. All the wires fit in just fine. There's little... Um, boxes here to transition from inside the chamber to there and then it makes they enter right here which makes this pretty easy to wire manage these are 350 watt psus i would be worried about the pie running hot above that power supply with only the passive heat sink that's not it's not just that there's a cover here with two fans on it that will provide plenty of airflow. Is it that all one heater or is it sectioned? It is four, four 300 um, spec beds. So they're each, they're, they're, we're using LDO beds. Um, so they're the full coverage um, heaters and they're 600 watts each. So the 2.4 kilowatts worth of heat up, but they're sequentially heated up so we don't draw too much power. Does Phoenix include anything new and exciting for homing or nozzle offset calibration? I haven't gotten into that yet. I know Max has been working on some stuff, um, but I haven't, haven't gotten into it. Yeah, there's two Noctua fans. I don't know where I put them. Um, let me grab this other piece have stuff all over the place but there is a cnc cut here this will go here like this and then two fans one blowing this stuff and one blowing right here and there's venting on the top and bottom that'll and then this this opens there's hinges and magnetic locks so this opens yeah and this the this outlet here only powers the beds this one powers the the two power supplies the rest of it is the heat sink um it is it is not that's glued on basically You need to move to a civilized country where 2.4 kilowatts isn't an issue. Yes. You used to cut your own panels. I have a Shapeoko um, here. I have a Shapeoko Pro XXL with a VFD spindle, so it's nice and quiet. I cut this. I, I didn't cut the panel out. We got these from Tap Plastics overall dimensions and the rounded corners. I cut the notches and all the mounting holes on, on that. And it took four setups because it barely fits on the printer. And so I had to do each corner um, at a time. And are you going to set up a spool man database so you can keep track of all your 240 spools? <laughs> I, I wouldn't, the problem is you have to maintain. Setting up a database is fine, but maintaining it is the is all the work. I, I couldn't do that. Steven Sat just caught up on the stream at double time. Great to see you and 
team at Smurf. Awesome. Nice to see you, Stuart. Um, what did I miss? Okay. So, that is... Back a little bit. Go back to this. Okay, so this is going to go down here. Got a couple of clips that hold this in place. Printer maintains it once you build it. You just have to add new spools when you get them. But which... I'd have to mark which... I don't know. Oh, shoot. Well, that's a problem. Okay, so I'm looking at this right now, and I accidentally put one of the um, the nuts on here that has the big um, hole in it that I used as a, as a spacer. Let's see if I can get this out of here. It looks like it might almost... Almost. How am I going to get that out? Anyway, I got to remove that, that nut. Apex Peppers. What V0 mod is this? This is a V0.2 with a Bowden setup with the Nightwatch Bowden extruder. Um, otherwise, it's basically V0.2 R1. Yeah, this is the power side of the foot, which makes that a little more complicated. So I need to get to more more areas, but you're right. I just need to unscrew. I gotta shift the whole, the whole foot, which means probably removing this SSR bracket that I made. There's a QR code print scan option for it so you can maintain it easily for large collections. Okay, so that moves out of the way. This one comes out. Is there any in that direction? No, I think this will all shift now. Yep. There's one. Two. I gotta get the correct ones back in. There's one. And where's my nut? Let's find my square nuts box. There it is. There we go. <laughs> Getting nuts for mud sucks. Fortunately, handles and camera were simple enough. Ireland, every room has a dedicated 20 amp, 230 volt circuit. Yeah, it's here in my garage. Honestly, I'm probably going to hook it up to a 20 amp circuit anyway. Um, I mean, it's obviously not 240 volts, but at least it's, um, at least it'll be 20 amps. What's that? Oops. This goes on here. Awesome. There we go. That was a whole lot easier than I feared it would be. My Chef's Choice bundles are still half off. Install a NEMA 1450 in your garage. Can double as a car charger. I do, I have one on this back wall, which honestly, that's where this is probably gonna go is this back wall. Um, along with other 240 volt devices. Okay. Now we can get onto this. Future feet for V0 designs need a groove for nut ingress, ingress, egress. It's not a bad idea. So 
That's gonna go right like that. Oops. These need to be, these are a tight fit. What do we got? We hit 300. Awesome. With 35 minutes. Oh, with an hour and 35 minutes to spare. Good job. 418 people. Okay. So now I'm going to shift these around until it's all lined up and then it'll just kind of clamp itself and hold that. And there's not much to this. It's just a, oops, oops. Let's move these up just a bit and put this back in. This is mostly just to make these clips sit correctly and feel a little more complete and polished. Could probably set up a four wire 240 plug for the bed so you can split two of the beds to one leg and the other two to the second leg to evenly distribute the load. Well, I'm going to need to build this to what the majority of people will be able to set up in there for their setups. So that's going to be the first iteration anyway. Okay, so that's on. And then this one goes over here. Like that. And it's got this. This will go up here this will actually get these the other side of these hinges so i think this will be like a 10 millimeter this, yeah 10 millimeter in three back these Has BTD reached out to any of the winners from the celebration streams? I sent a message. I know they, the, they are probably traveling. I did send a, um, a status update message to them. So I will let folks know as soon as I hear back. My daughter Juan got Steve's message, but crickets. Yeah, I, I will. Um, I will find out. I would I would not expect them to be ghosting people that they they're not. Um, it's it's probably just a matter of getting um, getting to it with their travel. Yeah. Luke Luke was in the UK. Where is that? The panels are exactly the, the width. So lining things up is difficult. Let's go up a little bit. One person left that I haven't been in touch with. Okay, so now just these to stay in place. Because the panels are exactly the width, the screw rubs on it and tries to shift it as it's as it's being tightened. Just touching base with one of the last two guys as we speak. Awesome. Okay, so back panels are on. And I think it looks pretty good. And that gives me access to the to the extruder, which you need. It wouldn't be practical to put the full back panel on here. Then top hat needs some attention.
Okay. So I was missing two of these bottom clips before. So I printed those. And you need a set of Timmits RGB side panels. I have a set. I need to put them on one of these printers. I think I might even have two sets. Anytime I see you working on a V0, I want to build one. This is my um, fourth V0. I like them. Just kind of line things up. And I see one more on this side that I was missing. Welcome back, Steve. I did have an awesome time, Keith. Pathetic Puma, space gray top hat looks great with the blue frame. I think that was the only choice I, that, that really made sense. Any blue, any current blue frame would not match my original here. Because this is one of, the, one of the first five LDO Voron frames at all. Okay, now we can work on the back. I really want to build a couple of V0s. Yeah, they are awesome printers. I really need to work on my layout in my shop so that I can more easily throw prints at multiple of them. Right now, I basically use one. I use my gold V0 the most. Um, but I need to be able to use all of them. I've always got the frame powder coated, but then it wouldn't still be the original. It was kind of fun to build one at Smurf. Oh, you got it to 90% complete? Nice. What is extruder of that on the V0? This is a, um, the Bowden tool head, and this is the modified version from Heart K with the tool head board. Is it any better than the M4? Oh, the extruder, I'm sorry. The, the tool head is the Bowden. The extruder is the night, uh, night watch. It's basically a stealthified pocket watch. Hey, Ballistic Tech. Okay, so there is a, and where do I put that over here? It did come with the fourth panel. Do both of the exteriors have tap equipped? Yes. If so, do they use that to do Z offset? I'm not sure. I haven't gotten into any of the firmware config stuff. Max has all that set up. I'll learn it when I get there. <laughs> There's only so much bandwidth. Okay. That. Now up here we still use these. That. I really do need to get a second working printer at some point. Having multiple printers is very handy. But for my underwear on my V0. Nice. I finally got my Formbot V0 serial and added it to the Voron database. Very good. What serial number did you get? This is serial 103. Now I had all the parts to get a, a double digit serial number. I just took forever to actually get it built and take a video of it. I want a Micron 2, but now I need to build the LDO Trident 300. Oh, yeah. So those parts are well underway. Printing skirts right now. They sh the two front skirts should be done by the time stream's over. I'll send you some pictures when they're done. I 
And the three is a nice number though. So an early prime number. <laughs> Then the hinges go on here. So that's going to go there. That one's going to go there. Swap them out for A1s. What are we talking about? Four manual head torque specs. I'm very prone to over torquing. Since building printers keeps us young. That is a good thought. I know I very much enjoy it. I'd better. It's been a year or so since I spoke with them. Oh. That's right there. I think these are tens. Minus V0 3207. Wow. Max and I were talking about a local store that's a bit dodgy here. Ah, okay. Tuxedo, thanks for being a member. Spent too much time at Smurf staring at it. Yes, you should stream the build. That would be fun. Just skip over any parts if you find any um, issues with the parts I printed. <laughs> we can adjust these once it's on the printer. That's the case Steve will live forever. I've got no shortage of builds. That's for sure. There is no shortage of builds. Okay, then the last thing we need to do is put the little screws on the front uh, with some Loctite. I'm gonna go 12s on here, I think. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> How many V0s could one fit inside a phoenix. Let's see. That's basically the side of a bed there. So probably, probably three wide and two deep and two high. So what is that, 12? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, 12. Looks like 12. Did you do anything special birthday related or was it the whole trip? The whole trip was a birthday thing. Like I said, my wife and I both celebrated our birthdays there. It was fun. There was nothing particularly um, dedicated to that, but it, the trip itself was more than enough. I like the clock, clock in the shot. Your phone keeps me busy. Oh, I have, is, does that show up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, how many people could fit inside? And one Nero, yes, this is true. Could you fit something building a V0 inside? Someone building a V0 inside of, inside of a Phoenix. Okay, so I put some um, Loctite on there. And then this little tool has a built-in spacer, which we might have to adjust, but I'm just gonna put that on there, just like that. Has anyone done the GE5C mod for their 2.4? I have, I have one of my 2.4s is running the GE5C mod. It's, it's there, it works. Um, I don't know that I could say that it's appreciably different or better than 
than the any of them that don't have it. Okay, and over time that will cure and those should stay in place. Thoughts on new Doctor Who specials? I haven't watched any recent Doctor Who. My, my pattern of watching Doctor Who is usually wait a few seasons then binge watch it to catch up. Do you know what your next build is going to be after this 0 0.2? Probably, honestly, probably the switch wire. Probably the switch wire LDO because I'm not getting my head around the Rook build enough to know exactly what set of printed parts I want to go with. The Rook is going to get built. It might not be the next build. I think the LDO switch wire kit is a easy pre-Christmas, don't have to think a whole lot about it, just build it, um, build. Okay, so that's on there. Those screws you can see are in there. Now we can put these guys in there. No Doctor Who spoilers, please. Exactly. Thank you. No Doctor Who spoilers. Where did my little tool go? Ah, over here. Build a second Phoenix on stream for us. I don't have room for a second Phoenix. There is... It's not outside the realm of possibility of needing, of wanting or needing to do rebuilds. So if something like that happens, then maybe. Now, what did I do wrong here? What did I do wrong here? Why isn't, oh, is that lining up? Okay, that is lining up, okay. So if you notice here, what I need to do now, see how there's a big old gap here? need to go on here and let these shift up. So loosen these, this whole thing shifts up. There we go. And they can move down into place. Hey, Steve, I'm sorry I'm a bit late to the stream. It's nice to meet you. Absolutely. It's good to meet you, too. This should wiggle into place. Isn't that wiggling into place? Then I can put a screw through here. What size is that screw? Looks like it's a 12. A couple of 12s. Will you be building ERCF V2? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it looks cool just from the teasers, but I don't know anything about it. Tournament stream before Christmas might be cool. Definitely not biased or anything. Oh, hey Kyle. I'm not where are they using plastic because mine died. I actually don't use the um, the LDO palm nuts. Um, I don't like the anti backlash version. So I would, the palms are fine. I think the, the spring tension on them is probably increasing wear. What can I see? Do, do, do. Is Et involved in the, in the development still? 
and I can tighten these. Where can I see? There we go. That isn't as well in, involved. Okay, so now these are tight. Wow. There we go. Okay. That isn't okay. Screws are spendy. You get nickel and dime to death. Feel like it's a good platform for mods. Teaser videos on YouTube. ERCF V2. Okay. Oops. Oops. We got a problem. That is not lining up. One problem. What is causing that? But the bigger problem is play around with that a little bit. Um, we left the bottom panel off. Here, put that back on. Here, one last view. One last view of. What I'm pretty pleased with, the electronics setup. Okay. Dunk. What are we, 11.47? We haven't even gone two hours. Maybe, maybe we'll do an unboxing of the LDO switchwire kit while this while we get a print started on this. <laughs> I did not engrave this bottom panel. I don't I don't think ABS engraves as well as the matte acrylic. I'm still using a palm lead screw nut. It's just not anti backlash. Let's see, I might have to lift the, the door to lift the top hat to get the door on. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna loosen these just a little bit. Those were a little tight. There we go. Um, Dibon would engrave well. Is that the ACM panels? I, yes, they, they would. Paint them with a V-groove bit. I could. I have the MC Etcher bits as well. That might work well. The same problem with the lid closing. I had to loosen the hinge to get the top hat to close. Let's do that. And put this on. Then see if this will. That went in a little better. Oh, there we go. That's, I just needed to loosen those screws a little bit. Okay. And that is the thing officially finished. Finally framed the Make Magazine with the V0. Awesome. They had, oh, nice. I have a few copies of that. I do need to get one on a wall. Is the front door on the Phoenix a single fridge door style or is it bifold? It's bifold. Okay. Get this powered up and start a print. We currently have 331 likes. Awesome. In a little over an hour until giveaway time. 
to detune the funky homing. I haven't touched it. Uh, the last two weeks in the UK, and then I really needed to clean. So I spent my last two days just cleaning. I didn't even work on, on Phoenix here. Technically. I did design because the deck plate has a couple of um, openings in it for the bed wires. I designed some um, TPU covers to, because I kept dropping things in them. So that's the only thing I worked on. <laughs> what was that banging sound? Did you ever figure it out? Yeah, it was the, um, we had, it was actually um, stealth mode, right? Stealth chop mode on the extruder. When we changed it to spread cycle, all those noises went away. Yeah, now it's officially finished. I'd like to do a display. I actually talked to David Crocker um, about, um, what is it? The SPI displays to try to get the simple V0 display to work. And it's on the list. It's just on the list. Do you have any Charlie pins left? I do. I have a whole, I probably have a hundred Charlie pins. I gave away a ton of Charlie pins and a lot of stickers. I think I probably gave away more pins and stickers at Smurf than any other event that I've had them at. Now you need to do your video so you can issue your cereal. I only have one. Oh no, this is, this already has a cereal. This is the only one with a cereal. This is the only one with a cereal. The rest of my these zeros are not. Polar Ted has a CAN bus mod for a screen. CAN bus FD, because this is RepRap firmware. It needs to be CAN FD. And then it has to be supported, right? Please print just a standard Benchy on the Phoenix when it's done. Not scaled up or anything, just the one tiny boat and see a print dead. Sounds good. I will. I proudly show my Steve Bolt stickers on a sticker cabinet. Awesome. Did you have stickers at Earth? I did. I did. I had stickers right there. I have four V zeros. I have four V zeros, a micron, and a salad fork. As far as my fifteen fifteen printers. Generally, I only have one serial per Voron model. And actually, that's totally true now. Um, both of my switch wires, the LDO kit and my original switch wire were serialed. Um, but that was mostly to fix a little goof up in the, in the serial database. So I submitted a video to serial the LDO kit. No, I don't want to call Jason. I love Siri. <laughs> I want to do a 180 solid fork. I like my 120. Um, it'll be interesting what Yuri does for a 180. Is there a can FD tool headboard that will fit the V0? There is. It's right here. It's right here. This is a mellow fly something. This, kit, this has can FD. Call mom. <laughs> I, I wonder what, I bet you that was LDO Jason. Let me, let me find out. Is that the, that's probably one of the only Jasons in my, in my thing. Yep. That would have been LDO Jason. <laughs> Anyway, this, this little box of stuff has the can tool headboard, the little Wi-Fi module for the, for the Fly 5. What else? I haven't even looked at this Fly 5. Hey, Andre. That is actually sealed. unseal it so yeah this is the fly five i have not looked at this at all but it has the 
the Duet expansion port there. It has a spot for that Wi-Fi module. And I'm assuming there's a CAN port on here somewhere. Hey, Peter. So this is thanks Jay at Team, Team Gloomy. Um, gave me this while I was at, at Smurf. And oh, there's a little antenna. So I think my plan is to put this on my solid fork. I think that's a good, a good application for it. And is that the one with the built-in ARM64 compute? No, I don't think so. What the big thing it has, I think, is enough memory to load RepRap firmware. I guess that's a big problem with a lot of the boards is they don't have enough memory on them. If my MCU board has a CAN connector, do I need a U2C? No, you can run it in CAN bridge mode, but you do have to connect it with USB to the Pi. You can't use UART or, or whatever at that point. One of the nice things about the Kraken is there are two um, CAN ports on it. So I'm home running both tool heads all the way to the board. It does not have a built-in SBC. It doesn't need it because it has enough memory on it to run uh, RepRep firmware. Okay. Whoop. Did I turn this on? Yes, I did. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Forgot something. Boop. It can stay on for this. I gotta put the spool holder on. It replaces that. This goes here. Oh, I'll need it. And where's my other ruler? There it is. Folding spool. Yeah, so this is an LDO um, thing. 7085. Oh, this actually probably needs to be placed based on where the where the spool best fits. So let's let's see. This, it's not folding, it's, it's, it just comes off and then slides in like that. Put a spool on here right there. That's probably a pretty good spot. I want it a little higher than, than not. So I'm just gonna leave it right there. So, and then this slides off and goes in there like, like that, out of the way. And we're gonna print in brown, old, brown eSun PLA. I remember seeing your original 2.4 in the background. You planning a rebuild on that? I'm thinking about a tear down and refresh. That would be, so that's one of my serial number 449, 449 or 459. I actually don't remember. Um, it, it did, it has a um, full Chaotic Lab CNC parts kit, just checking it out. Um, but it also runs a Duet Mini 5 Plus and it's going to run a Roto with the Duet CAN tool headboard. Okay, let's feed this past the filament sensor and then we can get this loaded up. Don't forget, you can use a proper CAN hat on the RPI, something like a, then you can run all other units use as CAN bus nodes and skip the bridge stuff. I do have one of those um, CAN hats as well, the WaveShare one. I'm holding a newborn, what is that spool holder? This should be available on the um, LDO. Here, let's find out. It should be available on the LDO. Um, there's the spin. Oh, and here, the Welsh Dragon. We were talking about that earlier. I was looking it up. Um, the Wales national flag thing. 
Um, let's go here. Um, docs.ldomotors.com. Daniel, thanks for being a member for six months. And if we go to the V0, let's just go printed parts guide. And I think I am zoomed in. Yeah, quite a bit, probably a bit too much. So in here, detachable spool holder. So if you go here, you will get the different pieces. So you have the mount and there is a fusion file here. So let me paste this. All oh, the wave shares are hot garbage. Okay. What do you recommend? The tool head wiring is usually the culprit. Oh, talking about something else. Don't forget, you can also see there. I've had that wave share can hat since, I mean, I've probably had it for a year and a half. Um, okay, so that's that. Then we need to go over here and this should be able to reconnect. There we are. I still haven't fixed this disc almost full air. Uh, let's load the filament. Let's just go. That's fine. Heat up the nozzle. Let's heat up the bed. While that's starting to heat up, let me do a little quick IPA refresh on the bed. If you're running the current version of Clipper, and reflash your control board to match. It works a lot better with the bridge mode than previous versions. Yeah, the very latest, didn't Kevin fix a bunch of stuff? And to make it all work a lot better. Jen's nozzle on V0, use it for rapid prototyping. Many kits don't give you a proper choice of hot ends. Okay. I don't have a, um, a macro set up yet for feeding the filament, but I can go here and we're just going to go G zero E 400 F 1200. There we go. It's about 420 millimeters to the, to the hot end. So. Lots of redacted messages today. <laughs> Double data rate is one of the major changes for can. It's a proper choice consensus for hot ends. No extrude button. No, I need to set up macros and stuff. I haven't done that yet. I should have had, I should have one. Yep. It got right to the, right to the end there. So now if I. Um, let's go here and we can extrude. Let's go 20 millimeters at five. Extrude the last little bit to purge the old orange out. And my tweezers. I'm using the board that someone who used to be in the Voron community dev designed has a, the cheap wave share uses a 2515. It can't handle the bandwidth. Where would you, can you still obtain that? See you, Nathan. Kevin updated a bunch of stuff that fixed. Yeah, I read the, the change log. I just don't remember the details enough to be able to explain it all. What's a monster behind you? 600 by 600. Yep. Okay. So that is all heated up. Let's go to No, I didn't want to start Fusion 360. <laughs> I wanted to start Prusa Slicer. I've been playing with skirt buttons recently. I now have a short press, long press button macro for Clipper. Really? That's interesting. You didn't notice the Phoenix back here? Here we are. That's better. 
<laughs> while I close down fusion. I have a cool little skirt buttons mod that I need to install. Um, I was thinking about putting it on the Tridex because I think that could probably like have a button for tool head change, um, stuff like that. I got mine from Raymond. I don't think there is any more. Oh, you know what? I have one of those. I have one of those, Jeremy. Yep, because I got one from Raymond too. Along with two Hoovids that I never installed. I think a, a full kit for Phoenix is going to be tough. But what I hope to see are sub-assembly. Like, be able to buy the frame. Or buy the motion system type stuff. There are um, custom um, X steppers. The, the shaft diameter and length is custom. The Fizetic hot key kit is really inexpensive and modular. I have the one that Fabrico sells. I don't remember the name of the person who sells it, but you're running a Kraken. Yes, it has a Kraken. Okay, let's go back here and this time actually start Prusa Slicer. And it's not there because um, I updated and I need to pin it to the start menu now. Here we are. Imagine LDO motion kit is not far off. Yeah. We need Jason to do some magic on kits. The, the big thing with is just the sheer weight and shipping. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Phoenix seems pretty far out from Vaughn design principles. It is, it is different, but it doesn't change the other offerings. Uh, just PLA. I should have done... I'm going to open the door, actually. Um, I should have done some ABS, but I didn't really prep. Phoenix is expensive. Yes. Really, Phoenix exists because it, it already existed in, in the form of E24. So, if this was starting from scratch, I don't think it would it wouldn't be an option. It wouldn't be a possibility. The only reason it exists is because it was already done. Would you build a printers for ants version of Phoenix? That would be kind of neat to do a small, a small floating gantry IDEX with ball screws and all that. Is there an advantage to using RepRep over other firmware? Or is it just what is used on whatever board you have? Um, I'm using RepRap firmware because I want more experience with it and I wanted to be able to expose people to something other than Clipper. Hey, Lewis. Okay, what I think I want to print just because we just got done with the Sanjay Mortimer RepRap Festival and I think I want to print the... and we are in the holiday seasons. So I want to come down here and print their reindeer. Go 3D models. And here, the Rupert the Reindeer. Sound good? Sounds like a fun little, fun little model to print. Clipper didn't exist when I started this hobby. Clipper existed, but it was very raw. I, I installed it on my CR10 years ago. And I got it working, but then I switched back to Marlin. <laughs> Great seeing you at Smurf. It was awesome seeing you and everyone. It was it was such a good experience. Um, let's save this to the stream folder. Let's just throw it right here. CR10 Club represent. Yep. I had the Meltsy single lead screw 2017 era. CR10 was my first printer. Okay, let's go over here and we already have all the settings. So, Rupert the reindeer. How big is this? That looks like a good size. Let's slice it. 
Hey, BBs. How long does it say it's going to take? An hour. That's about perfect. We got a little over an hour left in the stream. CR10S was my first printer, and that's the one that added the second lead screw and an extra drive. Uh, no, it went to the 2860 or whatever controller. Do you have the big turbo part fan on the side of any of your V0s? I do not. My printers, for the most part, tend to be fairly spec. And that's mostly because I just haven't... I, I do so many builds. Um, do you guys keep all your old printers as you upgrade? I haven't gotten rid of too many printers myself. Okay, um, that is sliced. Let's send it over to, let's just, let's just upload and print. What the? Let's see what happens. It is copying. I still got my ANET A8 in parts. I still have my CR10, it's just, it's not. It's, it's in parts. I don't think I could rebuild it. I don't think I could find all the pieces to rebuild it. Well, that's interesting. Why did... <laughs> Apparently, my sensorless homing tuning is off. <laughs> Have you added chamber lights to any of your printers? Yes. Yes, I have a few of them with it. Um, this is not even close to being able to run, so let me cancel this print. Error. Set pressure. Oh, yeah. Um, status. Pause print. Cancel print. <laughs> uh, let's... Let's increase the Z. There we are. Get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, sensorless homing is is a whole 84. Is that what I want? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can just get it to get it to home right now. See what it's doing. Why did it do it that time? But it wouldn't do it when we were trying to start the print. Let's get the stuff out of the way it tried to print. While the V0 in its spec form, the V0.2 does not have end stops. There's nothing wrong with good old end stops. In fact, this has to have end stops because sensorless homing is not good enough for when you need to align nozzles. <laughs> okay, we're gonna just try to restart that job and see what happens. So it should just, it's gonna heat up the bed and stuff, but it should go. Now looking at this little thing, I'm starting to miss it, seeing how smooth they are. Yeah, there we go. That's more like it. So to be honest, I have sensorless homing on two, one or two of my other Vorons, and I don't have to worry about it. It just works. Oh, I have sensorless homing on a V0, one of the other V0s too, and I don't have to worry about it. This is all about tuning, and I don't have this tuned very well. Um, no, I don't believe so, Scott. I, don't quote me, but I think the Prusa XL uses um, uses the load load cell, the string gauge.
Isn't there an alignment procedure with a little puck or whatever on the Prusa XL? That's a little squish, but it's not obscenely so. I thought they had a little thing to, to where you can align a little calibration procedure to align it. And I thought it used the load cell. It is a little low, but it's not scratching the bed. It's just, um, it'll be fine after the, on the second layer. Load cell on a pin, yeah. Okay. This is all about, all a matter of spending time to dial it in. Exactly what Kilroy said. Yeah, so that'll just sit there and print. This is eSun Brown PLA Plus. I've had it. I probably bought this at Fry's, which will give you an idea of how old it is. <laughs> I don't print very often with brown, but it's handy for um, stuff. The extruder is the pocket watch or night, night burner, which is the stealthified pocket watch. But yeah, I'm, that's not too bad. Space gray top hat and blue frame works pretty okay. I miss fries too. I miss fries from about a year before they actually closed because they went to some consignment model that was just garbage. This is a Mandela Roseworks bed with the integrated magnets. And so it is a little bigger. I think it's 130 millimeters square but there's indexing pins built in. How about all wheel drive for the Phoenix? That wasn't really in the, in the scope of the design. Um, we'll see what the performance is and where it goes. What was the print time estimate for your Rudolph? An hour, an hour. Dude in the fries Roosevelt was awesome about 10 years ago. I could spend a day in there. Oh, yeah. We really need a micro center here. Sacramento could support a micro center. We had two fries. Micro center would, would kill it here. Absolutely, Scott. I would much rather go. Uh, the micro centers I've been in, I, I would make weekly trips there here. <laughs> Original fries was best after they went to super store model. It all went downhill. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just going to sit there and print. And that would create cold spots in the bed. I don't know. I haven't noticed any issues with it. Put four on zero point two on Phoenix for size. I did rewind about forty minutes, maybe twenty five minutes. <laughs> My wife is firmly okay with not having a micro center near us. I want it to. The Phoenix IDEX make it to the V two point X. Don't know. I mean, it should. I mean, you could adapt. You could adapt Tridex stuff. There's there's one out there that looks very similar. You can always visit Massachusetts, come to Micro Center here. Uh -huh. I think, aren't they putting one back in the Bay Area? Isn't they're actual active, they're actively doing that? The closest one to me right now is about seven hours away. And that's in um, Anaheim area, the Orange County one.
Okay. They want to. You have a thermal cam to check it? I do not. I really need to, I want to get like a FLIR cam or something. Um, I don't know. I need to do some research on what a good one to get because it would be nice, especially with Phoenix. I want to see the bed. I want to, I think I might look into that. If anybody has a suggestion on which one to get, let me know. How's the other garage coming along? I cleaned it. The last two days I've been cleaning it. You upgrade your Tridex with Tridex with double tap. The plan is to update the Tridex. I don't know when, but if double tap is the way to go, then that's the way I'll go. Should I poured concrete at the Oh, nice. iPhone floor camera is good and much less expensive than a standalone. Um well, and also I can probably figure out a way to show the screen on, in OBS as well if I do it on the iPhone. You have several in your lab? Okay. If I, if I did it on the iPhone, as long as the USB-C versions are compatible with the iPhone 15, that might be the way to go. why it looks like a little wandering ghost. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Rice was a special tor store in its time. Yeah. Yeah, and that's turning out really good. The iPhone cameras are not very high resolution, but are great for tooling ar around at home. Something that I could get into a source in OBS would be good, would be neat. Comp USA. We had a Comp USA in Sacramento. I think it was over by the Garden Mall, right? <laughs> Fry's definitely had a range of products. My, well, I got rid of it, but my little portable AC unit I used to buy it, have, I bought it Fry's. What, wasn't there a, was it Egghead? There's an old computer store. There's one of those up in Reading. <sighs> Another half an hour. Maybe we can... See what's in the... Yeah, a little bit of hardware. Really, really the thing, the thing with old computer stuff was computer shows. Local computer shows. <laughs> I, I just got, I just remembered that you sent me a message, Pointy. And it's, I don't think anybody could read anything on the screen. But I appreciate it. I do appreciate it, but I forgot to check Discord and I just got the, just got your notice on my phone. Where is nice priced, probably usable in OBS. Ooh, it has Wi-Fi. Hmm. I I I I just need to go out and look, see what's available. Do you take lots of pictures in and outside of the show? 
I, I should. I need to I need to upload them and maybe share an album or something. I didn't take a lot of pictures. Um, not and definitely not enough at the show. So future plans for this printer is I kind of want to wait until 3.5 is finalized. And then I want to go through and do input shaper tuning and all actual print tuning at that point. Are you getting a bamboo? I spot E3D stuff. No, but I put one in a, in a Voron tool head and I'm going to use it there because that'll get mid twenties, um, uh, um, flow rate. And I'm going to put it, check it out. E3D ended up giving the, the creators at the event little swag bags. I didn't get a bag, but I got these. <laughs> they couldn't find my bag. Three point five finalized for what? Doing just the, the the final tuning stuff. I know things like there's a there's been a recent commit to fix like the editor and and DWC. Um, I kind of feel like I want to wait until it's finalized before I do any real tuning on this, since I didn't get to it in the build anyway. some flow measurements on stream. I can't get mine to do even close to 20. We could. Yeah, I'm sorry, 3.5 of rep rep for more. Yeah, sorry, I didn't clarify that. It's It's a release candidate right now. I go from the 80s Radio Shack, got our first computers from there. First computer I really played around with was a Tandy T1000 that a friend of mine had. We used to, we used to make his mom really mad by driving up the phone bill, calling BBSs. <laughs> Can't remember now, but does one need to be here for the drawing? Yes. And we'll be doing it in 32 minutes ish. Thirty-two ish minutes. Thirty-one ish minutes. So old uh, radio shack Tanny was half. Yep. Yep. The 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 original fries here in Sacramento was on Tandy Lane. There's a Tandy leather shop across the street. But I didn't come down to Sacramento until 2000. I moved here. I moved here from my hometown in 2000. I grew up about two hours north in Red Bluff. Playing Trade Wars. Yep. Yep. There was a local computer store who ran a Trade Wars instance that we would log into. Trade Wars, Legend of the Red Dragon. And there was another one similar to that. I remember, I remember Trade Wars well. I ran, I ran a small BBS for a, for a very short time. I called it Static Discharge. I used to like, the, the fun thing was designing ASCII art for like the, the, the BBS logo. Going in there and there was a ASCII art editor we were using.
Just finished my 2.4 R2. Thanks for the streams. Awesome. <laughs> mm. Both of those. I remember the draw and acid draw. Yep. Exactly. I remember both of those. Hey, KB. Trade Wars was the um, ships and, and ore and cargo and it was text-based. Not the drug dealing. It was space. You walked into a Gen X memory <laughs> lane. This guy and Tandy programmed the box on the store by hand. Our age is showing. Yep. Hey, Techie. Remember the computer in my my class had the um, what was that? Diet of dysentery. I'm drawing a blank. Chips challenge. I remember that. That was a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time with that. Oregon Trail. That's it. When Oregon Trail was current. <laughs> <laughs> oh they have chips challenge on steam currently building xol toolhead with rapido awesome i have the fans for xol toolhead i need to the the plan for the the trident that's getting the nine millimeter belts is i'm hoping that i can there's a compatible configuration for that for that First computer was a ZX Spectrum. Games loaded with magnetic tapes. That's before my time. My own personal first computer was a 486. I think it was a DX233. The 120 megabyte hard drive and a 14 inch Super VGA monitor. But I didn't get my first computer until I was in high school. I was, I think I was even maybe a senior in high school. So probably 94, 95. That's turning out pretty good. Um, let me get a little closer view. Yeah. So do we want to watch this print or do we want to open up the switch wire box and just see what's in there? Have you messed with the LDO Leviathan yet? Oh yeah. I, I, here. Um, I've messed with the LDO Leviathan. Uh -huh. Look familiar? <laughs> McDonald, thanks for the gifted memberships. I'm doing local ISP. I got a 486 Packard Bell. We'll go over this board and stuff when I get... I'm waiting for Nighthawk to finalize, which is the USB toolhead board from LDO. I'm going to install a Leviathan and the Nighthawk on one of my V2s. 
that's one of the boards along with the taco raven and the nacho hat i'm going to make those um display boxes for rj thanks for the gift and memberships our first computer had a 750 megahertz amd duron tagley thanks for the gift and memberships I am currently running Leviathans, I think, in both of my Tridents. None of them are the very latest version. I don't own the very latest version. Um, all of mine are beta units, but they're, they're working fine. This one I took out, it was working when I took it out. Nighthawk does come with this. It does. This, this Switchwire kit does have a Nighthawk in it. But it's apparently, I don't know if it's necessarily 100% the latest version. Let's move that out of the way. Let's go here, maybe. What does the Nighthawk add over the heart keyboard? It's USB connected, so it's like CAN, only four wires. Um, but it's easier to set up because it's just USB. What's the story with the bigger plate on this machine? It's a Mandela Roseworks plate, which is a little larger. Has integrated magnets. Um, let me find a Sharpie to obscure my address just in case. It's probably good enough. Well, that's weird. Huh. It failed. Printing paused. Filament. Oh, well, that's fun. Let me set this down here. Never be too careful on the internet. Did it just stop? Filament error on extruder zero. No filament. It triggered the runout sensor. Let's see if I can resume. Hey, it did. It just resumed. Well, let's see if that does that anymore <laughs> false positive I I I was warned of some some of you warned me of trouble with that <sighs> welcome to the filament sensor failed club yep I figure I have the Positron kit too, but I don't really want to unbox that since it's going to be collab with Nero. I don't want to do something on that without his involvement. <laughs> I tried leveling the bed. It probably did trip when I moved it, but it shouldn't be that sensitive. Okay. Doo, doo, doo. So much tape on here. It's easy enough just to cut those straps where I... There we go. I think I missed it. Do they have a release date for the Positron? Um, no, it, the, the kits that we have are beta kits. I think the expectation is early next year, but we'll see. Nero shooed the box, but did not open it. Okay. Glad I'm not alone in having issues with the V0.2 filament sensor. We'll see how, cons how, how reliable or not it is. Okay, I think this is just two boxes, so let me get... Let me get this box out. There we go. I 
get to do that again. Hey Kit, this is a switch wire. And I already found a small bomb issue in the switch wire kit already in the pipeline to be fixed. Oh, okay. You haven't smashed that like button yet. My first computer. Oh, we got 20 minutes to a giveaway. I've got to skip the filament sensor on my V0.2 build. I don't know. I'm going to keep using it. See how much of a problem it is. I did move it. Although that shouldn't do that. Okay, let's see what we have over here. Maybe we go this button. Yeah, that ought to work. Stuff. All sorts of stuff. Do you recommend convert my ender to a switch wire or build a Voron 0.2? I like the both answer. <laughs> we have an skr mini e3 v is this just the v3 yep v3 switch one back up and running after putting pcb clicky with the x side between a micron or positron to do next Fans and the power inlet. Did I miss something? Is there a potential issue with the 0 0.2 filament sensor? We got a false positive here. The Revo Voron. It is the blue one. A couple of extra nozzles or 0.6 and 0.4 nozzles. I'm not going to take this out. Hobbit, thanks for becoming a member. And is this a. 40 watt heater. Are these standard? Yep, standard flow nozzles. Twenty-five ten versus thirty ten for cooling a dragon. High flow. In a V zero. Are you talking about the hot end fan? It should be a thirty ten. Derek, thanks for being a member. Did the SKR main board have a rubber ducky in the box? This one did not. I don't get to add to my rubber ducky collection. I'm gonna set this stuff back here. Fans, I've got some documents. What kind of documents? Oh, stickers. Oops, cool stickers. And one of the LDO Voron things oh well serial number plate ldos don't come with the ducks my grandson absconded with all my duckies i should do something with them i have a huge number of them a little ridiculous. Oh, come on. I wanted to put you back in there. Good enough. Good enough. Fill a printer with duckies, I could. All the panels, I'm not going to open this up, but panels. Ah, different power supply. There's a Morn Sun, which is the same brand that they use on the V0 kits. 24 volts. While we're here, switch that to 115. It is a 350. Yeah. Do you have enough to fill the Phoenix with duckies? <laughs> no. 
Keep the ducks in your car when you see a Jeep, leaving them a duck. That was Mornsun compared to Meanwhile. Mornsun's a good brand. There's nothing nothing wrong with Mornsun. Ooh, another sticker. There we go. There's the Nighthawk tool board. This is the latest version of the Switchwire. Yep. It's their Rev C. I haven't started printing parts for it. Um, when is the giveaway? 15 minutes. So this is what the Nighthawk tool board looks like. So there is a breakout board for under the, in the electronics compartment. And this takes 24 volts and USB signal and send it, sends it, oh, a six pin header. Huh, what do we have? Oh, extra grounds. We got 24 volts, three grounds, and data plus and minus. What are the improvements on the new switch wire? Um, it's just tool headboard, um, uh, touch screen, things like that. Hey, Mert. RHD, this, Clayton, this is the LDO Switchwire um, Rev-C kit. And this is the two-piece tool headboard. And all the connectors sitting there with pin terminals. And it uses a the XT30 plus two connector on this side, and it looks like a six pin here. Almost 500 people, wow. Wow. How many new people see that? There we are. This little mods that LDO decides to include, yeah. Hey Pedro, 12 likes short of 400, awesome. Thought about doing a switch where I'll see how my first 2.4 build goes. Nighthawk is is USB. So it's not it's not can, it's USB. Happy, thanks for being a member. 404 likes not found. <laughs> That's funny. Some of my switch wire was still thrown, except I have the heart. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because there is this. What's the next build? Probably this. I need to do the, the Rook, but I haven't figured out exactly what collection of printed parts I want to use. This is the the tool head board. So this is the tool head side. This is the, the breakout side. And it looks like this is six pin just so they can get all the grounds. Oh, it just did it again. It just triggered all on its own. So. Oh, it just did it again. Can I disable this mid print? Can I disable the Can I disable that filament out sensor? Could be a toggle. Let me see, is there, is there a toggle here? Name that printer, Brittany. I don't think, if the filament's there or not, it shouldn't shouldn't trigger. It's rep rep firmware. Okay. Let's do this. M five ninety one D zero S zero. M five ninety one D zero S zero. There we go. Thanks, Norgorot. I'm gonna trust you. The brown is confusing it. 
Speaking of CAN bus, I find it interesting that Elon Musk has decided that Ethernet in 48 volts is better for car wiring than CAN in 12 volts. Hmm. Okay, let's put this all back in. Where did this go? I have to learn to do it. Rip, rip, for inter firmware interface. Yeah. There we go. Cool head in motion. I'm not going to go through every little thing and just see what we have. Vontech BMG parts, cable chains, key back. Bomb activated. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth, I don't think I want to, but I don't know if it's worth trying to do a single stream build on this. Might be two streams. Might try to do it in two streams. Gonna build two ender wires next year, I think. Nice. It does come with a pie, a little one gig pie. And then I guess this is worth noting. Looks like a Morn Sun five or pie supply as well. I wasn't expecting that. Interesting. When are we going to see LDO Leviathan? Um, I am going to install that on stream, but I've been waiting for the final version of Nighthawk to come out. Um, and I'm not quite clear on what the difference is between Nighthawk that's in here and what's being produced. It might just be a matter of packaging and actually taking it to retail. I don't know. It is a Voron Phoenix in the background. Yep. I'm going to get excited about finishing my switch wire. Maybe a good stream will kick me into gear. There you go. If I can help. Hey, Philip. Any chance next year you'd consider a tap changer or tap changer light? I mean, there's always a chance. Phoenix did seem to survive shipping all right. Yep. The SKR can't power the pie. What I was surprised is that it wasn't a meanwhile. I haven't seen a Morn Sun in that small form factor is all. Got other cable kits, LEDs, sensors, power cables. What's Nighthawk? Nighthawk is LDO's USB connected tool headboard. What printers do you have? Um, yeah. I have all the Vorons, multiple of some. I've got a Mark IV, I've got a Mark III Bear, I've got a Mercury One, I've got a VZBot 235, I've got a Positron, I've got a Positron kit, um, I've got a Phoenix. <laughs> End up buying a meanwhile five volt. Yeah. Separate Pi PSU is great, so you can toggle the printer on and off with PSU staying on. Yep. Okay, switch wire motors, fasteners, tools, and miscellaneous. Oh, good. Actual PTFE and not FEP. That's a good job. The LDO kits were coming with FEP for a long time. I did not, I, I bought the stuff to build a 1.8. It turned into Trident. You know, Ella, I was thinking about having a stream one day of seeing how many printers I can get going at one time. Yes. Ooh, neat. Oh, and that's neat. Little low profile feet. I like that. But the the other thing that's neat is they included their little 1.5 millimeter driver. Five hundred people here. 
Fortunately, if I do it in the middle of the day, it'll be fine because I have solar now. I think the challenge of how many printers can I get going at one time is how quickly I can reset. Can I reset those breakers? I do not have a bamboo lab. The closest thing I'm going to have to an off the shelf printer is a Magneto X. When it comes in, we'll check it out. My electrical panel. I have a 200 amp panel. Okay, rails. We don't really need to see rails. Power cord, flex plate, and heated bed. Y carriage. Let's see what they're doing for flex plates now. I am excited to check out the Magneto X. Yep. Any plans to build an Urkfa V2? Not yet, but who knows? Oh, that is a... Still need to do some work on it. Maybe. That is that is a lot of packaging for a for a flex sheet. <laughs> wow. Looking forward to the Magneto review. It'll be good. The Magneto thing that is um, not sponsored. 100% purchased by me, thanks to you. I saw it. I thought what um, Mark and his team are doing is a good thing. So I decided to pre-order it. <laughs> I know Annex is a dirty word to some folks, but the Tradrax is pretty dang sweet. There are more Tradrax printing than ERCS at Murph. It looks neat. I don't have any complaints. Any. What do you do with all that cardboard rent a dumpster? It goes in the recycle bin. Okay. It's chatting to the Magneto X team at Smurf. Seems like a great bunch. Yeah. Okay. So the frame. <laughs> I did have a great time in the UK, Alexander. It was awesome. Look at that. Bought some energetic flex plates, came packed exactly like that one. Yep, I chose orange. So my plan right now is, and I'm going to see what this is going to look like. Um, but my plan for this build is to go orange frame, um, polymaker galaxy orange main, and maybe natural as an accent. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I asked Jason what colors were going to be available and um, I asked Jason what colors would be available and he said they might have an orange frame. I don't know if this is the orange frame left over or if they are producing them. I'm just going to say natural go for that dream sickle color scheme. I, I was kind of thinking it it's very reminiscent of of our favorite inspector so let's go in like that that they have an ldl kit that they have an ldl kit Nighthawk using usb-c different hot end so it's it they split it out there's a little breakout board that splits out the power and the data for the usb board so they're running 24 volts up the power lines and then the data volts and then everything on the tool head board um gets taken down for whatever other um 
things that are needed. So. Uh, the sun is too low up here in Denmark. Some solar panels are no good until March. Ah, yeah. Um, time. It is. It's giveaway time. Good timing. Let me put this away and we'll do a giveaway. Have you taken or are you interested in the open AMS project? I have no idea what that is. Oh, actually, I do have an idea of what it is, but I haven't taken an interest in it. Okay, let me put this, this stuff away and we will do a giveaway. Join the Discord or find anything on the open AMS. The vague name that searching is a pain. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's. I'll put this up here. There we go. <sighs> We got over 500 people. I need to just do variety streams, I guess. <laughs> okay, we have giveaway has lots of entries. We have fewer entries than people here. So that means you have three seconds to get your entry in. Links in the pin post or in the description. In three seconds, I will close entries. You must be here to win. Yeah. If you want Polymaker Filament, there is an affiliate link in the description. It does help out. Looks like the printed solid box my frame came in. Yeah. Do you mind that I do not defend bamboo either? They have a lot of issues as well. I did. Three Steve seconds. Yeah, it's already started. I mean, we're, we're I, I guess I should say three. Okay. And now we're going to count down. I, I, I go through, if we go three seconds without a new entry, then I close it. So now I promise one of these days, I'm just going to go three, two, one and close it. So you all have nobody to blame but yourselves. If you're waiting for the last, for the last, till the last second, because it's fun. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna close this when we haven't had a response in three seconds. So three, oh, three, <laughs> three, two. Stephen County and Good already won something recently. Awesome. Three, two, <laughs> oh, three, don't, oh, three, two, oh, starting over. What do we got? Let me catch up on chat. Do I have time to create more emails for more entries? No, that's not in the spirit. <laughs> I think we've gone 10 entries since I started this, at least 11 entries now. So three, two, one and a half. Oh, there's one, three. And you know, I get quicker every time. So three, two, Polymaker has the Starlight Nebula. Ooh, I should try that. One. Okay, there we are. <laughs> Christmas vacation at the Grand Canyon. Nice. I've never been to the Grand Canyon. I've seen it flying over, but I haven't um, I haven't actually visited it. Countdown is their way of gambling without their partners getting mad for draining the bank account. There we go. <laughs> okay, let me get this exported. Oh, let's go over here. That's still printing. Yeah, we should be able to see that finish before we log out. Three, two, squirrel. Exactly. So we 
R. Let's get rid of the add. Let's create a spreadsheet. Here, I'm gonna do a preemptive unpin the message while I'm waiting. I'll learn the hard way that if you wait until one on stream, the delay gets you because it's already closed. Oops. <laughs> okay, Stephen B, you were the very first entry. Who got the last one in? Dentox. Dentox got the very last one in. Let's paste this. Okay, so what do we have? We have, we have the, the, the successor to the V24 behind us right here. So let's go number between one and 24. One and 24. I got busy yakking and almost missed the entry. <laughs> almost 450 likes. Incredible. One and 24. One and 24, let's go 21. I like the number 21. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And spin, you must be here. Who is it gonna be? 24, four, I, I saw that too, great white. <laughs> Who do we got? Lehan, Lehan, are you here? I'm starting a two minute timer. Oop. There we are. Are you here, Lehan? Congratulations. Are you here? Got to like? Thanks, Dr. Dave. Lehan, say something in chat. I'll see it. Tag me if you can. You don't have to. As long as you say something, we're good. <laughs> Makes me wonder how well their randomizer works. Well enough, I'm sure. If you like the stream, you have a bigger, change, bigger chance to win. I can't prove that, but I can't disprove it either. Lehan, are you here? Not taggable. Fuller Ted Club applicant. Going in for a second interview. Yep. One minute left. We're on the second interview. We got 45 seconds. Uh, you, you, you lose the, Elu the orange, the, um, the, the, I close it at, at giveaway time. So we'll do it again next week. Every week we do it. We have 25 seconds, 25 seconds. I'm going to have another little, little treat. 20, 13, 12. Drama's real. Four, three, two, one. Sorry, Leanne. You're the latest inductee to the Polar Ted Club. These are wine chews. These are really cool. But the GPs give me a Welsh gift bag. The GPs and partner. One more for the Polar Ted. Okay, let's do a number between one and 12. We'll cut it in half. One and 12. Wine gums. Yeah, there we are. They're yummy. They're not edibles. One and 12. Let's go four. One, two, three, four, and spin. Who's our next con inductee to the Polar Ted Club? <laughs> Who do we have? 
Nicola S. Are you here? Nicola S. You have two minutes to say something in chat. And I've got um, jelly beans as well. Oop. Nicola S. Are you here? Polar Ted, is there a story behind that? Yes. So I did a Trident build and was giving away a Trident kit. And Polar Ted, who went by a different name in chat at the time, but they go by Polar Ted now, went and made a sandwich instead of being here for the giveaway. They came back later and it was a whole thing. And Jason, being the amazing person he is, gave him a consolation prize of a V0 kit. So, going to make a sandwich, not being here for the giveaway, gets you in the Polar Ted Club. <laughs> what do we got? Less than a minute. Are we, we're going to have two inductees today. Come on, Nicola. Are you around? Nicola. Anybody see them? How do I convince Jason to give me a kit? <laughs> Had to purchase 12 pounds of honey? Nicola. I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how many members are. Not too many but not zero okay we got two of them we're gonna go one to six give me a number between one and six and cut this in half each time <laughs> i want a sandwich i'm ready for a sandwich it's okay we need more time for this print to finish let's go five One, two, three, four, five. And the next member of the Polar Ted Club. <laughs> Who do we got? Mansu, are you here? You have two minutes to respond. Mansu. <laughs> if you want to just be ready for the shipment from EU to USA. Mansu, are you here? Are they taggable? Oh, I haven't eaten just one wine gum. I've, I've had a few. <laughs> Mansu, are we going to have a record number of new inductees? Got a little over a minute. <laughs> what is the record? How many have we had? Somebody would see it. I have confidence that somebody would see it. Redacted Stephen Chatter popped in a few times, was busy prepping for a move and getting some things squared away. Close to dinner time, just call my name and we can wrap this up. Five is, is our record, huh? It is the correct list. Oh, yeah. Yep. We had three in a row before. And we're waiting in the next room. Well, the next one is going to be it because we're going to run out of whole numbers that we can that we can shuffle. <laughs> Five seconds. Five hundred people still here. Okay. Number between one and three. 
Got a number between one and three. Three point four one four because the polar ted pie is almost done. Nice. To me, I'll be over with. Number between one and three. I mean, let's just go three. One, two, three, and spin. Who we got? This is going to be a, there. This person is going to be here for sure. Steve S. Steve S. Are you here? Steve S. Technically, two is the only whole number between one and three. Steve S. Come on, Steve S. Come on, Steve S. This is definitely the correct list. Definitely. Is the print going to finish or are we going to find a winner? Which one's going to happen first? Because we're awfully close. We're awfully close. Steve S. Has anybody seen him? Steve S. is moderator. The print is going to finish. It is. It actually is. We got less than a minute. The print will finish. We're going to have four inductees. How did I identify as Steve S? We got the Santa hat left. There's a Steve Smith, but Steve S isn't taggable. Well, I've got the number there, so we can confirm. If someone thinks they're Steve S, I don't really have a good way of doing that right now, Daniel. I'd like to, but. Did you download the list from the knitting stream of the neighbor on YouTube? Ah, <laughs> uh, we got four people in the Polar Ted Club today. I guess 69, I'm totally. Ah. <sighs> We're out of numbers that we can shuffle. So we're going to go, we're going to shuffle between one and 42. You didn't see that coming, did you? We got, we can't have five. Patrick, thanks for the gifted memberships. We can't have, we can't have five. So we're, we're, we're going straight to the answer. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 Lausen, Laus, Lausen, Lausen, Lausen. How do you say that? Fleming, congratulations. You are not going to be the next inductee. You're here, right? Fleming. Ah. Fleming. My, um, Engagement, my chat thing's gonna spike like this right at the three hour mark. <laughs> Fleming, are you here? They're here? Really? Let me see. I gotta get eyes on. There you are. You're even a member. Good job. We did not get a fifth inductee. Whew. Okay, let me get this. Paste it in here. Sure we have an entry. We do. We are good. 
<laughs> Thanks for sticking around, Badmouth. Mentally absent. Awesome. Hey, we finished it before the print finished. Nice. Print did not finish. It's still going. Congratulations, Fleming. You will get an email from me sometime in the next couple of days. Steven Z, thanks for the gifted memberships. Oh, and haircut time. <laughs> We're printing the little um, deer, the the Rupert, Rupert Reindeer from E3D. We just got done with Smurf. It's the holidays. Seemed appropriate. <laughs> Need better lighting. Yes. And I have... I have some um, XR Bunker LED strips I'm going to put in here. Off to eat my dinner next room. See you, James. Such an awesome sponsor to partner with. Everyone should buy a spool. Yes, and use the affiliate link. <laughs> I don't, any of your favorite content creators affiliate link. It's It doesn't cost you anything. It helps out. I, the, the Voron ornament thing started after I, um, went to, or started around when I went to the, um, went to Smurf. So I haven't printed any of them. I have all my printers running because I've got Nuno's printer parts to print. I've got Switchwire printer parts to print. I'm not sure I'm going to get to any of them. Yeah, I hope over time the EU um, Polymaker thing improves. Three DO does have some. Oh, that one was good. <laughs> A jelly bean. Um, Three DO does have some nice colors. Um, I'm I'm going to use their Makita blue on a printer. See you, Mr. K. Well, uh, brown seemed to be the most appropriate color for a reindeer, so I grabbed some old brown Isan PLA. What tool board and extruder are you using? Looking for options for my rebuild. Um, on on this, this is a Bowden setup. I have a, the tool headboard is from Heart K. It's a, it's for the Bowden. And then I'm using the um, Nighthawk extruder, which if you go to the Pocket Watch um, repo, you, you can find that extruder files, the Voron Pocket Watch repo. Nikita blue, right, red, green, and another green. Nice. New try polymaker one day. I use a ton of protopasta myself. I've I've printed a lot of protopasta pet G lately for blasters, for foam foam flinging fun blasters. Nightwatch. Nightwatch. Yes. 3DO is 20 minutes from where I live. Manny at 3DO has been having fun um, with me on his Discord. He's had a couple of contests lately. There was a caption contest and there was a um, draw a picture um, contest. This here, let me let me bring up the winner if, if I still have it. Uh, it might be easier to bring it up on my phone. Let me see. There was a draw a picture contest and I, I got to pick the winner. Um, did I save it? Yeah. That was the winner. <laughs> I think it turned out pretty good. And there's also a disapproving Steve um, emoji or 
icon or whatever on their thing, which I find hilarious. What's this model? It's the E3D um, Rupert Reindeer model off of printables. I have not used form feature of fil filament. Good night, Dentox. Oh, nutty. Well, that was weird. It moved down at the end of the print. I need to go through all my stuff on this. It's all over the place. Um, there it is. Get that away from the hot end. There's something in my end G code, I'm guessing, that caused something weird. It tried to move down and then over, and I don't know why. Talking with Paul Maker at Smurf, they were working on it, but also don't want to upset current vendors. I get it. Reconsider the stop macro. I need to check, yeah, I need to check my NG code. Uh, I mean, we can check it right now. Um, if I go into the slicer and go to my G code. Ah, here. If layer Z is less than the max print height, G1, so it's trying to do something, move printer head up. I think it's going in the wrong direction. This needs to go away because this is a remnant from my clipper profile, but that doesn't, that didn't do it, but it's probably in here. It's probably in here. It probably has something in this logic is wrong, moved down and then tried to move back. Hey DJ. Oh, I'm sorry. It's probably in, in not that, that needs to be deleted. Here, let's just delete that. It's probably in here. Ah. It's a G1Z. And then I think it probably. Yeah. Maybe in the wrong positioning mode, trying to do a relative mood and it's an absolute. Yeah. Hey, Kosh. It was nice to meet you. Um, okay. Calls pause. Where? No. No. Yeah, I'll I'll play around with it, but in any case, we got we got a print. Let's let's see. There are the areas here. Let's go this. There are the areas that where it filament run out did some some things, but otherwise. Once again, without any real tuning. Yeah, there's there's where the filament filament things happened. But without any real tuning, it looks pretty good. Oh yeah, this hat. And it it was a little squished, but it still came off, comes off without making any, any marks on the plate. Hey, Martin. The Bowden is 400, about 420 millimeters, believe it or not. Bowden comes from here and then up and all the way into the tool head. 
It's a it's an, a surprisingly long um, Bowden tube. I'm going to always specify the mode in my macros, yeah. And I, this is a, a, a result of me recycling my, uh, in a, does it still say? No, it says RepRap, yeah. Recycling a, a previous um, profile. Is this a duet thing to use the slicer to generate the stop G code rather than getting a slicer to just call a macro stored in the printer? I do the same thing in Clipper, Barnyard. I don't have a print start and print end macro in Clipper. I do it all in the slicer. So which is better, Bowden or direct feed? Um, in general, you're gonna have an easier time tuning a direct feed um, printer. And Marcel, the, because I have four V0s and three of them are direct drive. So I wanted, and, and Kyle, or Hart K, um, sent me the tool head board um, to try on this. So it was basically a, why not? Cameron, thank you. I did ANSI art way back when, nice. <laughs> a lot of this printer is basically about doing something different. This whole build, this whole series has been about doing something different. Um, rep rep firmware, duet um, controller, Bowden. So, should buff the bed edges, shine like a mirror. That's, I guess that's a better, better look at the, and then it comes with a, a screw hole here and here to index the plate. And I didn't think that was really handy to have them in the front here. So I drilled two new ones in the back and tapped them. So now I can put this in this way and then I can slide it over to meet that one. Oh, why not? Isn't that the whole reason behind the switch wire? Yes, that was a COVID side quest uh, for Max, for RCF. Thought it was how long time? Yes, this is this is a, basically ten and a half streams because today wasn't really focused on this. That was probably the highlight of today, but I figured I needed something to do, um, and it was nice to actually polish up the V zero with the top hat. And now I consider this done. Um, there's obviously some macros and. Um, Slicer settings I need to tweak, but what will the bed size be on the new switch wire kit? It's the same. The That is the same. It's the Prusa um, Mark III or Mark 52, MK52 um, heater bed. So there's no change there. One more. Jelly beans. <laughs> Okay, so we will be, can be done quick. Maz almost completed a build. Oh yeah, these can be done really quick. Um, before I was actually streaming, I did one in Discord and got it basically to a point of printing in 10 hours. So, see you Marcel. What do you plan to print on the Phoenix? Good question, open to suggestions. A, a full plate of NASA fabric is on the list. <laughs> Micron plus when? I did it um, last year. So, I'm having a way to the kid with the signed Ultimaker he carried around all weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was nice. Um, next weekend, I think, is probably going to be switch wire start if I can get the parts printed. Um, I don't, I'm not going to be ready for the, for the Rook. The Rook is going to happen. Um, but now I can focus on figuring out how it's going to happen. Where leading up to Smurf, I had too many things on my mind and I couldn't, I, I didn't have enough bandwidth to figure out what I wanted to do with Rook. Now I can, but it's still going to take a couple of weeks for me to get uh, ramped up for that. The switch wire isn't easy. I just need to throw parts at a printer and I'll be ready. So... Um, that's the plan is probably next week is probably going to be switch wire. Um, and then shortly after that'll be Rook. 
So, and then some at some point this month, I'm not sure, probably the weekend before Christmas, we'll do the Charlie's Angels stream for the month. So, um, yeah, so with that, I think we're going to call it. We're at uh, three and a half hours, a relatively short stream, but I have things I can work on. So, um, thank you for everybody. Uh, and big thanks for anybody I, I saw and interacted with at, at Smurf. That was a, a really fun time. Um, thanks, Polymaker, for the filament giveaway. Um, lots of gifted memberships today. Thank you. Um, thanks for donations. And we will see you um, next Sunday. <laughs> Bye, everyone.